Turner Network Television presents Southeastern Conference Football, a TBS Sports production. Today's game pits the Gators of Florida against the Wildcats of Kentucky. Brought to you by Coors. When the heat's on high, nothing beats a Coors kind of cold. The clean, refreshing taste that says the best of the Rockies is yours. Coors to you. And by Hardy's. Have you tasted what's making America say it's here? It's all here at Hardy's. And brought to you by Tire Kingdom. Quality tires for less. Less than anybody. And by Newswatch 8. For the best in sports, weather, and news, join the Newswatch 8 team, morning, noon, and night. Commonwealth Stadium, Lexington, Kentucky. Today, the University of Florida could clinch at least a tie for the Southeastern Conference Championship against the Wildcats of Kentucky, who are 7-2 and two on the season and are hungry for a major bowl bid. We should have an interesting game this afternoon. It's a little bit chilly here in Lexington. The skies are overcast. Temperature is going to be right around 40 degrees at game time. My Miami, Florida friend Tim Foley will be shivering for the entire football game, but the little foot heater will keep us warm. We thought you'd like to know that at home as you watched us in the cold here. Let's talk first of all about this Florida offensive team. They lead the conference not only in scoring defense but in scoring offense an awesome running game bob that's complemented by a very effective passing game and the man who makes it go is kerwin bell the freshman walk-on quarterback kerwin bell last week had two td tosses one for 96 yards but he does more than simply throw touchdown passes what impresses me most about this youngster is is, is an ability to maintain his poise and composure you're seeing here check off against georgia throw the ball to the weakness of the defense and he is always poised and always under control and these three running backs Hampton Williams and Anderson are in the top seven in the league and they are set to break Florida's rushing record this year you know and here you see John L. William but but take your pick I mean they can all scoot they're all powerful big strong backs and they run behind a group of fellows that call themselves the great wall of Florida Five massive offensive linemen. Getting outside on Kentucky is getting tougher, mainly because of the play of this man, 54 Jerry Reese, who also pressures quarterbacks. Jerry Reese came on in midseason, replaced Jeff Smith, who was injured with uh, a knee injury, and has done real well. So is Cam Jacobs. He's an ex-defensive lineman, come on to play linebacker. They need to keep him free. They need to keep him clear. And Paul Calhoun not only punts, but is a great safety. He leads the league with six interceptions. He's kind of the quarterback of the secondary, Bob. Lays back in the middle, but also takes a risk, as he does here. Bites on a short route and makes the play. And he's going to need to make some plays for that uh, Kentucky secondary today. The Kentucky offense is something to behold, too. Kentucky has very good running backs. They have three or four good running backs, too. And a quarterback who I think could have been a pioneer in the olden days. He's a tough guy. He plays hurt. He is a team leader. And he's a man you want to watch today, number nine, Bill Ransdell. He is healthy now, I understand. He has had some injury problems, rib cage problems, but he's back. He's throwing motion will be fine. They're going to need to move him around like that to keep him clean because Florida has a, a very good pass rush. Number 33 Adams is third in the league in rushing. He is also scoring a lot of touchdowns and uh, pros like him, Tim. Yeah, I was talking to Bill Davis, the vice president of player personnel for Cleveland. They say his stock has really gone up this year. He'll have to beat this guy, Alonzo Johnson. They are forgetting Wilbur Marshall with the play of this man. He makes a big play here against George in a goal line stand, but they're playing better as a team than ever before. Ricky Eastman is a fine cornerback for Florida. Florida will play more man-to-man -man coverage today. They're going to try and put pressure on Ransdell. They're a little bit afraid of this Kentucky ball control pass offense. What a talented team Florida has. Kentucky, over the years, has always been known as a scrappy bunch. And with the arrival of Jerry Claiborne a couple of years ago, they're even more scrappy. Seven and two on the year. This is a good Kentucky team. An excellent special teams matchup to watch for today is Kentucky's punter, Paul Calhoun, averaging more than 45 yards a punt. And the great returner for Florida, number 89, Ricky Natil. From Commonwealth Stadium, we're just moments away from kickoff. We'll be right back to our studios in Atlanta with Craig Sager and Paul morning after these messages.
Welcome to the Action Center in Atlanta. I'm Craig Sager along with Paul Horning. I was in Florida this week. Paul was in Kentucky, so we should have this game pretty well covered. I saw one of the big high school rivalries Thursday night. Fort Myers defeated Cypress Lake 20 to really devastating both uh, Georgia and Auburn. I think Florida's got the best team in the country right now. They're playing great football. They've got the biggest offense and defensive lines in the country. Kentucky really has its work cut out. Florida has quite an incentive, a shot at the SEC title. Here's a look at the conference standings going into today. Florida LSU, who played to a 21-21 <coughs> tie back in early September, are tied for the lead. Georgia and Auburn are a game behind. Kentucky is two games back. Craig, I said in our preseason show that I thought uh, LSU had a good shot at the conference title. They had the easiest role not having to play both Georgia or Auburn. And if Florida and LSU both win today, they'll share the two, uh, the conference title. Georgia and Auburn have owned the best record in the conference the last five years. Auburn, of course, won it last year, then Florida, I mean, Georgia won it the previous four. But after last week, Georgia coach Vince Dooley says that his Bulldogs are not in the same league with Florida. Well, I think it confirmed a couple of things. One, that Florida's a great team, and number two, that, uh, uh, that we're not a great team. Uh, we're a team that uh, has uh, got good tradition. We fight hard, and... Uh, we play hard, uh, and uh, but uh, as long as we play sound and not make mistakes. But Georgia will not get any sympathy from one of its alums, Auburn coach Pat Dye. Coach Dooley would like for you to think that he's rebuilding every year, but uh, they, they don't rebuild at Georgia. They just reload. An interesting twist. Pat Dye went to Georgia, Vince Dooley to Auburn. I don't think they'll be rooting for their alma maters tonight. I doubt that very seriously. You know, Tennessee is coming off one of its most impressive wins of the season, a 41-9 to thrashing of Memphis State. And with the win today against Ole Miss, Johnny Major's Vols will be heading for a bowl for the fourth straight year. The University of Cincinnati is coming back. Tommy Joe May. Today's game, the 35th meeting between Florida and Kentucky, a rivalry that began in 1917 on Thanksgiving Day. The Gators have four straight wins. They lead the series 18 games to 16. Last year, it was Florida 24 to 7. That game was played in Gainesville. You look back to 1976, though, the Gators were on their way to what they hoped would be an SEC championship and were derailed right here in Lexington, Kentucky. It's a tough place to win. Ask anybody who's been in here this year. Kentucky has a 7-2 record. We did see Kentucky playing here this year against Georgia only about three weeks ago. Kentucky's quarterback Bill Rensdell was playing hurt, did not play as well as he'd like, and Georgia blew the Wildcats out. Rensdell is healthy today. Here come the Wildcats. A win here today and a win next week to give them a 9-2 record and a shot at a major bowl. They are virtually assured of some bowl position no matter what the record goes to. Last year, the Wildcats in the Hall of Fame Bowl, losing narrowly to West Virginia. Virginia. So we have a good football team and a rebirth of the program here at the University of Kentucky. They're expecting a sellout crowd today at Commonwealth Stadium. It is cold. It was only 29 degrees this morning when we came to the stadium, but temperatures are supposed to get into the middle 40s. The overcast sky is keeping the temperatures down, but it is really a good day for football. If you're from Florida, it's a cold day. If you're from Lexington, it's not an atypical afternoon. And here come the Gators. A win today and a Southeastern Conference championship tie at least. This afternoon later, LSU will be playing Mississippi State, and the tie would determine whether LSU wins or loses. So the Florida Gators playing under the probation announcement by the NCAA all year, playing under an interim coach, Galen Hall, have gotten it together. They have won six straight games under Galen Hall, and they come in here today favored by about 10 points. We'll be back in just a moment with the coin toss and the kickoff from Commonwealth Stadium. This is Turner Network Television. For Reed, Jimmy Harper, and let's go down for the coin toss. They just took place. Florida is going to receive. There you see the Florida captains and the Kentucky captains. They did the coin toss while we were away, and Florida will receive. And Galen Hall, the man you're looking at right there, has been rumored to be the man that's going to be the new head coach here. There are reports in Florida papers that he's already been named the coach. He says that it's still being negotiated. The players like the idea, though, as was expressed by Alonzo Johnson. Uh, he's a quiet type of coach. He's not a type of coach to uh, put a lot of pressure on. He likes to be real relaxed coming to the ball game. Uh, he's not the type of coach to come up with a whole bunch of great theories or sayings or nothing. He just knows how to win. The players like Galen Hall, and even though it's not finalized yet, 
the good money is on the fact that Galen Hall will be the new head coach at Florida. Tim Foley, these Kentucky Wildcats are going to kick off to Florida here. And one thing they wanted to do is try to keep the ball away from Florida. I think if you're Florida, you've got to be concerned about all the little tricks. Kentucky, the coaching staff will not leave any stone unturned. They're not going to leave any cats in the bag. They're going to try everything. I wouldn't be surprised to see something unusual on this opening kickoff because this is like Bob, this is going to be like the hood against the Bismarck here. You know, Florida should win this football game handily. But one thing that Jerry Claiborne has done here in Kentucky is reestablished a pride and an expectation to win. And it's going to be a battle for him. There's your deep kick return. Ricky Nateel is set at the goal line. He is a great punt returner. There is Joe Worley, the man who came in at midseason after Jim Ryder was hurt. He's a freshman from Oakwood, Virginia, and has taken over the kicking chores and done a very good job for Kentucky. So Nateel is back along with number seven, Lorenzo Hampton, and Gary Roll. There are three backs back deep. Let's watch and see if there's any trickery here. It is a short kick. It pops down and goes out of bounds at the 31-yard line. May have been touched by Florida. And I believe it was touched out of bounds. So, Tim, you were right. They did try something a little squirrely there, but it really didn't work for Kentucky. No, it didn't work for them, really, but it didn't didn't hurt. It's good to know that your coaching staff is going to be liberal. It's going to be aggressive in play calling, play selection, and it's going to be gambling. If Kentucky's going to win, they're going to have to come up with some big, big plays, both on offense and defense, to stop this Florida machine. There's that Florida offensive line, the key cog in the machine. First down 10 from the 31-yard line. John L. Williams. Out of bounds at the 37-yard line of Kentucky. Tackle made by Paul Calhoun. Here we go. John L. Williams behind that powerful offensive line. You see Henson, look at Lomas Brown blowing people off the ball, and Williams works backside, and now it's just Calhoun to keep him from going all the way. Shuts him off, runs him out of bounds. It'll be first down 10 from the 37-yard line. Florida Gators slot left formation to the short side of the field. John L. Williams again popping it up the middle. Close to a first down, he was tackled by Paul Calhoun and Brian Williams. We're going to take a look at Lomas Brown here. He's working on Jerry Reese. He's just merely trying to wall him off and create a crease to the backside if John L. Williams decides to take it. But Williams sees it straight ahead. They're bringing in the sticks for a measurement here. Florida has just opened up running the ball with John L. Williams. One long gainer around the left side and blew that one right up the middle, very close to a first down, just outside the 25-yard line. Close enough for a first down, and Florida continues to drive. This Florida team may be the best team ever at the University of Florida and certainly may be one of the best in the country. They're ranked fifth in one of the polls coming into today's action. They know that they could win at least a tie of the Southeast Conference Championship here if they could win today. It would be their first ever SEC Championship title. Gary rolled in motion to the near side. This is a handoff to Hampton. A gain of two or three. He gets inside the 25 to about the 23-yard line. Tackle by number two, Brian Williams, for the Kentucky Wildcats. There's that Kentucky defensive line. Mazza and Williams are the defensive ends, more like cornerbacks, really. The outside linebackers, Dumbled and Reese, the middle guys are also very tough and important, Thompson and Hare. Kramer and Jacobs at the linebacking spots. Tony Mays, Hairston, and Calhoun in the secondary. Calhoun, as Tim told you earlier, kind of the quarterback there. Second down, six from the 23-yard line. And off the fullback, John L. Williams stopped at the 23 by Cam Jacobs, number 48, senior from Coral Gables, Florida. Let's have a look at number 48, the leading tackler on this Wildcat team. It's a leading tackler, a converted defensive lineman, 
does a nice job of plugging that hole and grabbing a hold of John L. Williams. I mentioned in the opening they're going to have to keep him clean. He has to have lateral mobility behind the line of scrimmage. What that means is the defensive linemen are going to have to grab those Florida offensive linemen, not let them get through to the linebacker. Third down six from the Kentucky 23, opening drive of the game from Commonwealth Stadium. Pitch to the tailback. This is Lorenzo Hampton. Hampton with the first down, and down he goes at the 15-yard line. Jeff Kramer, the linebacker, with the tackle. So a critical third down defensive situation for Kentucky. Doesn't hold, and it'll be first down 10 Florida's Gators. And that's an awfully confident call by Galen Hall. The toss with the third and seven situation. For anybody else, that's throwing uh, the throwing down, but he must feel awfully good about his offensive line's ability to control that line of scrimmage this afternoon. McDonald out wide to the left side. Frankie Neal to the right side for Florida on first and 10 from the Kentucky 15-yard line. That's Odom in motion. Here's John L. Williams. After a gain of only one, wrestle down on a high tackle by 54, Jerry Reese. It's the man we said would be hard to run wide on. And there is Kerwin Bell. He is third in the nation in passing efficiency. Two long touchdowns last week. A key touchdown of 25 yards early in the game. And then a 96-yarder to Ricky Natil, second longest in the history of the Southeastern Conference. Just a freshman from Mayo, Florida. Galen Hall has done a fine job in developing that quarterback, not giving him too much pressure early, letting, letting him develop his confidence. He has that good size, 6'3", 185. He'll probably get a little bit stronger and heavier as his career progresses. Here's Hampton. Not much this time. Did not get to the 10. They knocked him down about the 12-yard line. It was John Dumble who made the stop. The 260-pound junior that plays left tackle for the Wildcats, number 96. Obviously, this is what Kentucky has to do. Hampton taking the ball, looking for the cutback. It's not there. Thompson, Thomas Thompson, excuse me, is forcing it wide. Now Mazza plays off his block, comes upfield and contains it. That's team defense. Mazza turns it inside, right into the arms of 96 John Dumble. Third down eight, Florida, from the 13 of Kentucky. Another big third down situation. Here's Bell. Incomplete, intended for Hampton at the five-yard line. And Kentucky keeps Florida out of the end zone. Douglas covering on the play number 27. It looked as though Florida was going to simply knife it right into the end zone on four or five running plays. This Wildcat defense toughened up inside their 20. Here's number three, the kicker for Florida. This is the short kicker. They have two field goal kickers, Bobby Raymond, number three, and number 16, Perkins, who hits the long one. This is Raymond, the short kicker, and he is one of the most accurate kickers in the history of the NCAA from inside the 40-yard line. It's fourth and eight from the 13. It'll be about a 30-yarder. It is good. Florida has taken a lead, three to nothing over Kentucky, with 10:55 to go in quarter number one. This is Turner Network Television. It was. Florida leads with a score of three to nothing here, driving it right down and then kicking the 20-yard field goal on the right side of your screen. George Adams, number 33, on the left side is Mark Logan. He wears number 25. Logan averaging 27, nearly 27 yards a kickoff return. He's a good one. Here's Perkins with the kickoff. It's coming down to Adams. He averages 21 yards at the five. Hit at the five and down he goes. Number 42, James Massey is down there for the tackle. We asked Kentucky coach Jerry Claiborne what was going to be the key to this Wildcat offense today. If they get enough snaps, well, they're going to put a lot of points on the board. So uh, the best way to, to defense them is keep them on the bench. <laughs> Kentucky comes out, and this is a fired-up Kentucky Wildcat team. He was tackled by 59, Mark Corp, an equipment adjustment, and Adams has to come over to the sideline here. And we see number 22, Mark Higgs, going into the game. So Adams pops right out there for a 25-yard run on a first down for Kentucky. From the 30-yard line, Wildcats, they trail 3 to nothing, 10.40 to go in quarter number one. Bill Ransdell, the quarterback number nine, gives to Higgs. Not much running room, a yard or two at the most. A penalty marker is down. Let's take a look at the offensive lineup for the University of Kentucky. 
Bill Ransdell has had a slump at quarterback, but he played very well last week against Vanderbilt. There he's the fullback. He caught six passes, which is unusual. There's Adams, Oliver White, Burbage, and Phillips. Oliver White, a very good tight end who also had a midseason slump playing better now. And there's the offensive line. Joe Prince, one of their best offensive linemen, has been injured and is missing from the lineup today. Joe Prince injured his knee, and uh, Brad Myers is in there replacing him. It looks like it's going to be a holding call against Kentucky. Kentucky's going to have to play this afternoon as well as they can play. Each one of their players is going to have to play up to their potential, and then they have a chance to win this football game. If they don't, Florida could turn it into a rout. There's Jimmy Harper, the official. Apparently, his uh, either he doesn't have his microphone operational or it's not working. They call illegal use of hands, similar to holding, against Kentucky, and they spot the ball back just outside the 25-yard line, where it will be first down 15. There's Joker Joe Phillips in motion to the top of the screen. Ransdell. Not much going. Looking. Running for his life. And down he goes at the 29-yard line. Arthur White made the tackle. And as you can see, that Kentucky secondary all over the blue-shirted Kentucky Wildcat receivers. Florida does a nice job of coverage. One thing that concerned Joe Kynes, the defensive coordinator for Florida, was all the, the variety of looks that Kentucky will get give you. Basically, they stay with a couple of simple patterns as Bill Ransdell displays his clever feet. They give you a, a few basic patterns, but they give you a lot of looks defensively and can confuse you. They can also give you a headache. Second down 11 from the 29. Here's a pitch to Higgs. Turn the corner quickly across the 35 out to the 36-yard line. Sybil, number 25 with a tackle for Florida from his strong safety position. It will bring up third down and medium distant yardage right about the 25. There's the Florida defense. Alonzo Johnson had a great game last week. Tim Newton, the stalwart in the middle. Pennington and Corp, the starting linebackers. Scott Armstrong, one of the linebackers who had been leading the team in tackles, is injured. Eastman is the key cornerback there. You'll see Roger Sybil making a lot of the plays, tackling. He is the strong safety who comes up and plays the run so well, as does number eight, Ricky Eastman. Third down four, big play for Kentucky early on. They trail 3 0. Ransdell, man open, first down, Kentucky. Out of bounds at the 44 yard line of Florida to Cornell Burbage. Number four, the sophomore from Lexington, a hometown youngster. And Ron Moulton knocked him out of bounds for Florida. This is what Kentucky has to do. They have to maintain possession of the football, and the way they're going to do it is by throwing these little short out patterns. Burbage on an option there, found a little hole by the sideline. Ransdell dumps him the football. First down 10, Kentucky from the 44-yard line of the Wildcats. Here's George Adams trying to find running room. Not much there, about two or three yards. Corf with a tackle for Florida. Watched Alonzo Johnson, number 93 for Florida. Alonzo Johnson might even might be better if the play is going away from him. Tremendous pursuit angles that he takes. He makes he made several plays against Georgia in the week before that with, by dragging people down from behind. I think that you'll probably see him grow stronger as uh, he gains another year of uh, age and strength. Second down seven, Kentucky. Adams and Derry the running backs. Pitts and Ledford the receivers. 82 Ledford in motion to the top of the screen. Here's George Adams, 33, hit behind the line. They got a yard or two beyond the initial contact, but not didn't even get back to the initial line of scrimmage. And that's something you see Jarvis Williams there, number 26, the cornerback moving up. That's something that Florida did so well against Georgia last week, and that's penetrate on defense. Yes, they did, and Pat Miller was the fellow that got up there and disrupted the timing of that play, and, and he has got tremendous speed. Both their linebackers can cover a lot of ground on the outside. Adams with 11 touchdowns. He ranks high in the nation in scoring. Third down 10 from the 44. Ramsdale, only a four-man rush by Florida. They're in a coverage situation. Almost picked off, and now they say that it was caught by Burbage, but out of bounds. There will be a discussion here at the 40. I believe he was inbounds. It was tipped by White, then a couple of Florida defenders, and then caught by Burbage. And now they're saying it is complete to Burbage for the first down at the 40-yard line of Florida. The bounce of the ball. This is what Kentucky needs. They're going to need a couple of these today, Bob. Tries to hit the tight end all the way across the field. White can't hang on. 
Ball's tipped up in the air. Adrian White has an excellent chance to intercept it. Hard Close to tell. Call. Hard to tell. <laughs> they rule it complete. And Kentucky maintains the drive, trailing 3-0, 7.37 to go. Quarter number one. First down, 10 at the 40 of Florida. Ledford in motion to the top of your screen, number 82. Ransdell to Adams. Tries to turn the corner. He gets a couple of three there to the 36 or 7-yard line. Korf makes the tackle. Tim, I like to watch Adams. When he turns the corner, he seems to increase his speed there. A former running back uh, at Florida by the name of Sonny Collins, Kentucky of Sonny Collins, had trouble when he went to the professional ranks of turning that corner. It seems as if, and turning it north and south, seems as if Adams doesn't have that problem. And one thing that Bill Davis mentioned about George Adams was his ability to collect himself and get up field without wasting a lot of steps, and that's important. Second down, six Wildcats from the 36 of Florida. Phillips in motion. Adams again. Adams first down, close to the first down. We'll have to see where they work. Tackled by Korf again. Korf's fourth tackle of the day for Florida. Let's watch where they mark the ball. It looks as if it is in first down territory. They may have to bring in the sticks. Now we get a chance to see Petroyak and Reich Wine and Brad Myers work up front for George Adams. George Adams is a team leader. He's got a tremendous relationship with his offensive line. Now before, those linemen know every time he touches the football, he's going to give them everything they have, and as a result, they work a little harder for him. He has 35 yards on this drive and is inches short of the first down. So it's going to be third down in inches. Now you'd think that's a conversion play that's possible, but if you want to know how tough it is, ask Georgia how tough it is to score on Florida when they had it first and goal at the two. Right, now Kentucky has got to take some risks. I don't know if they'll choose this time to do it. Uh, it's also a good play action down, Bob. You feel like you've got inches to go. You might. This might be a throwaway down for them. They might try something with White, try to stick them down the middle. Three backs in there. They give to the bread and butter guy. He does not get it. Trying to run to the side on Florida there is very difficult to say the least. Alonzo Johnson, 93, you see him in the picture. Arthur White, 43, involved in the play. And now it's a fourth down, and we have to bring on the field goal unit for Kentucky. See the Kentucky line fires straight off. They try to double the nose man, and there he is. Alonzo Johnson slips a block and sticks it to George Adams. So it's going to be a 50-yard field goal attempt here by number 15, Joe Worley. Worley, five out of six on the year. Hits it well. He may have it. It's good. That ties his longest kick, 50 yards. It's tied 3-3 with five minutes, 41 seconds remaining in quarter number For Kentucky, 11 plays, 63 yards for the 50-yard field goal. And, Tim, that's something that Claiborne wanted to do. A lot of plays and five minutes consuming time keeping Florida's offense off the field. Exactly right, Bob. And uh, I question their ability to do it. They're showing showing me something here. And they were also aided by kind of a controversial call on that reception to Burbage. Hampton at the four. Lorenzo Hampton down at the 25-yard line. Well, Kentucky's ability to come down here and answer Florida's field goal and tie this game 3-3 has to maintain the confidence level of this Wildcat team. And now we'll see what the Wildcats can do defensively here against the team that leads the conference in scoring offense, is second in the conference in rushing offense. You see there that Florida scores 32 points a game, Kentucky 26. You throw those stats out the window, though, when you've got yourself a 3-3 tie here in the first quarter. From the 26-yard line, Odom in motion. Not much that time. Out to about the 27-yard line goes Neil Anderson. Anderson and Hampton, in case you're not familiar with Florida, and that's probably not very many of you, alternate by series at the tailback position. There is Galen Hall. Very successful as an offensive coordinator at Oklahoma for many years. Now will probably be named the head coach of this Florida Gator football team next week. Second down eight from the 27. Here's John L. Williams. Not much. Only a yard. 
harder, too. That Florida offensive line is feared by about everybody in the country, but there's a freshman player, Jerry Reese, on the Kentucky Wildcat team who's not exactly fearful. Listen to this. Well, from what I've heard about them, they're the biggest we've played and also the strongest, you know. So, you know, they got some respect and that quality, but why step on the field on Saturday, you know, I respect no one. Third down seven, Florida from the 28. Bell, good protection. Open is Mateel, first down, Florida. Burrell with the tackle for Kentucky. Ricky Mateel, who caught the 96-yard touchdown pass last week. Mateel has just been an excellent player for them all year long. He came on, set a freshman record for receptions, and he's done a fine job as a punt returner, a leader in the nation. He's a very, very clever receiver. As I mentioned last week, he reminds me of another 89. This one wore 89 for the Dolphins, went to Florida. Nat Moore always knows where he is on the football field and what he's trying to accomplish against a certain specific defense. Florida first down 10 from the 38. Pitch to Anderson. Anderson to the 40. Only a couple that time on the left side. Williams and Calhoun combined for Kentucky to make the tackle. Florida has four first downs as they just marched it right downfield the first time. Kentucky picked up three. Both teams stalled on their opening drive, but were able to connect on field goals. And we have a 3-3 tie with only three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Jerry Claybert came here, went winless his first year. And then Wham went to a bowl last year, and he's headed there again this year. Second down eight at the 40-yard line of the Gators. complete to the 40-yard line of Kentucky. The receiver, 89, Ricky Mateel, was leveled by Paul Calhoun after the reception. Bell rifles that ball, Tim. There was some confusion in the Kentucky secondary on that plate. Tony Mays coming across to cover the wide receiver that's breaking up field there. Florida receiver broke open across the field. Calhoun was about a half a step too late. He had broke, he was, had broken on the football and he almost got there in time to pick it off. First down 10 Gators from the 40 of Kentucky. Neil Anderson tackled around the ankles as he tried to cross the line of scrimmage by left end number 47, Stacy Burrell. Neil Anderson had himself a fine game last week. Two touchdowns against Georgia. Kerwin Bell named Offensive Player of the Week last week for his performance against the Georgia Bulldogs. Now, Tim, explain those rating points you see on the screen. How do they figure that out for quarterbacks? We'll, we'll get back to that right after this play. <laughs> I ask you that because even the people who devised the system can't explain it. Second down eight. It means he's good. Second down eight from the 38. Here's Anderson again. Big hole! Close to the first down, just inside the 30 goes Neil Anderson. Fine job of blocking by John L. Williams on that play. Watch John L. Williams, a fullback, clear out the hole. He'll be taking on Kramer as Hinson moves down the down lineman. Bang! Kramer comes in to try to take it on, and Williams clears him out of there. Hare hustles over to make the tackle. Hare's playing injured today. They weren't sure if he was going to be able to line up or not. Well, Anderson has... 12 yards on four carries this afternoon. Just short of the first down. Well, this happened to Kentucky on the third down in inches. Florida stopped the Wildcats. Let's see if the Wildcats can do likewise to the Gators here. I might also mention, I've just learned that Cam Jacobs, number 48 for Kentucky, their linebacker, is playing with a cracked rib and wearing a flak jacket today. Hasn't hampered his play so far, but we'll keep our eye on it. Look at this. 95% of the time, Florida converts this play. And they do it again. Just running in there behind the great wall of Florida. They've named themselves, Tim. <laughs> Talking to the sports information <laughs> department people, you know, we asked what they were going to call these guys, what dramatic thing they were going to dub them. And uh, they pulled them together, and they let the offensive linemen name themselves. So instead of the Great Wall of China, it's the Great Wall of Florida. What can you expect from a group of offensive linemen? <laughs> <laughs> I'd leave that for you to say. This first down 10 from the 27 of Kentucky. 3-3 tie, minute 20 to go, first quarter. Bobbled snap, but Williams still gets a couple of yards. And we're going back to Atlanta now for a college football update. Well, thank you, Bob. Here's a look at the leading Heisman Trophy candidate, Doug Flutie, going to Peter Casparilla. 
And that sets up a touchdown. Nice arm by Flutie. BC on top, 7-0. And at Commonwealth Stadium here in Lexington, Kentucky, tied 3-3, but the Gators on the drive. 50 seconds remaining in quarter number one. Second down, six from the 23 of Kentucky. Odom, the tight end in motion. And off to Anderson. He does have some running room, avoids the tackle. Up comes Tony Mays for a nice play. Mays comes up from his cornerback position to make the stop. The sophomore from Paintsville, who's frankly had an inconsistent season, but is very talented. Well, it's not easy to make the transition from tailback to cornerback, as Tony Mays has done. He was a starter early in the year, lost his job to Gordon Jackson. He comes up, makes a fine play there. He earned his starting berth back. Partisan Wildcat crowd cheering on Kentucky on the third down four for Florida at the 21. Earlier, Florida got down to this territory. Kentucky stopped them, forced them to go to for a field goal. Four yards to go for Florida on this play. Here's Anderson. Doesn't get the first down. Stopped at the 20. David Thompson, the initial hit. Paul Calhoun came up to finish him off. That's the end of the first quarter. Kentucky's defense playing rubber band style today, giving at midfield, getting a little tougher when they get down around their own 20. Back for the second quarter in a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Of today's game are brought to you by your Toyota dealer and the hardworking 1985 Standard Bed. Toyota's best value in trucks. By the way, to our stations along the line, because of the lack of commercial or timeouts in that first quarter, we missed commercials number five and six for our network stations, and we will make them good during the second quarter. We'll make them excellent during the second <laughs> quarter. Bobby Raymond set to attempt the field goal. It will be a 38-yard attempt. Raymond is accurate again, and he's two for two for the afternoon, a 30-yarder in the first quarter, and now a 28-yarder here to open the second quarter. And we're going to take a commercial break for position five, and we'll be right back. This is Turner Network Television. Possession time, leading six to nothing, six to three on two field goals. Florida's had 16 runs, three passes. John L. Williams, seven carries for 53 yards. Interesting thing, Bob, though, only three possessions in that whole quarter. Florida, two drives, Kentucky, one. To the 30-yard line goes George Adams, who took that kickoff on the wing. As you could see, Kentucky lined up differently this time and brought Adams up high on the wing to take the kickoff and uh, got him out to pretty good field position here. Kentucky trailing by a score of six to three as we begin the second quarter from Commonwealth Stadium, Lexington, Kentucky, overcast skies. Temperature is supposed to be up near 50 and it's getting up close today. Matt Lucas had it tied in. Oliver White had some problems catching the ball in the first quarter. Here's Ransdell, first down 10 from the 29, under pressure. Green pass just thrown away. It was intended for Adams, but Adams was under such good coverage by 93. Alonzo Johnson that Ranstall wisely elected to throw the ball away. Good decision by Ranstall. They're trying to come up with a few things that'll slow down that Florida rush to make those defensive linemen think of think laterally before they think upfield. One thing about Adams is that, that he doesn't really run outside a lot. They're, most of those plays are designed to hit between the tackles, so they're going to have to try to do something to stretch out this Florida defense. Now Wheeler's in at tight end, number 80, second down 10 from the 29. And penalty markers go down. There was only one penalty flag, if my memory serves me correctly, in the first quarter, which is one of the reasons it passed by so quickly. Here's referee Jerry Harper. Jimmy Harper, excuse me. Vernon Johnson, I believe, may have had some motion over on the right side. Speaking of officials, I flew up on the airplane yesterday uh, from Atlanta to Lexington with Tommy Bell, the former great official in the National Football League. Tim Foley said to give you his best. Well, he used to take charge of those football games. No doubt who the boss was. No contact, no flag. Now Ransdell with an audible. Second and 15 from the 25. Two seconds. He got it off before the 25-second clock elapsed. Didn't do anybody much good, though. George Adams goes down. Seems like Florida starting to figure out the Kentucky offense a little bit. Pennington with the tackle, and, and Kentucky having problems moving the ball here. 
Pennington has had injury problems all year long. First it was his knee, then it was his foot. This time he fights his way upfield, erases most of the uh, interference, and eventually makes a tackle. It'll be third and 15 from the 25-yard line now. Kentucky, two out of three on third down conversion. Split way off to the bottom of your screen is number eight, Phillips, the receiver. Ransdell looks to him right away, but he's checked at the line. Now he breaks loose and almost picked off by the other number eight, Ricky Eisman. They tried to get it to Phillips all the way. He was chucked at the line, broke loose from that. Ransdell still tried to get it, but look at the great coverage by number eight, Ricky Eisman. He can close so fast. Here's Phillips. On defense, Eisman's thinking to try to prevent that receiver from getting inside. He's trying to trail him on his inside hip. He may look beaten there, but he's got deep help. Understand that. His job is to prevent the short inside throw. He did it excellently. Almost a chance to make an interception there. Here's Calhoun averaging more than 45 yards a punt. First punt of the game to Teal. He's back to receive it, but he's not even going to get the opportunity. As Calhoun shanks it, that's going to be a 17-yard punt by Paul Calhoun. Oh, he would like to have that one back. You can't give Florida this kind of field position. At least that's been the history so far this year. We'll be back in a moment after we take a break for commercial position number six. This is Turner Network Television. Florida leading Kentucky 6-3 to three in first downs and on the scoreboard. <laughs> The scoreboard, the one that really counts, 13.50 to go in the second quarter. And after a very poor punt by Calhoun of only 17 yards, Florida first down 10 at the 41. Three wideouts in there for Florida. There's Gary Roll in motion to the top of the screen. Play fake. Right over the middle, wide open. Roll, and he's down at the fumble. It's Kentucky's ball, unless they say that the ball was knocked out by the ground. I think they're going to say that the ground knocked the ball loose. The ground cannot cause a fumble. It remains in the possession of Florida. A two-deep zone as Kerwin Bell makes the fake, looks downfield. Two-deep zone. One of the places is to attack it down the middle if you can throw the ball low, get it there on the line. And there, Gary Roll makes a fine. Fumbled the ball, too. Let me they see just here. didn't see it. He fumbled that ball on our other angle. You ball can see out. that the ball was fumbled. So there's a great break for the Gators. First down 10 from the 15. It was out before he hit the ground. Here's John L. Williams. Can he get outside? Got a few yards, about four outside. Let's take a look at this again. Remember now, if the ball hits the ground and is fumbled, it's not a fumble. But if it's loose before that, of course it's a fumble. Watch it again. First thing, Gary Roll has possession of the football. The ball is on its way out. That's a fumble. Good hit by Gordon Jackson. You know, Gary Roll was named this week as one of the top 11 student athletes in the country. And he will be at that banquet with us in New York in December. A microbiology major. Congratulations, Gary Rowe. That's the College Football Hall of Fame back. Second down five from the 10. Here's Lorenzo Hunt trying to leap, and Tim Foley, defensive back, came out in him there, as you heard Tim helping make the hit there. Well, that was a pop, too. Uh, number 74, a little slow to come around, is Tom Wilkins. He's the defensive right guard, and he's having to play some more than usual today for Frank Harris, who's also playing hurt, so it could be a key injury if, in fact, uh, Wilkins is injured here. Let's wait till they get a look at him. The, Flor this hit. the Florida uh, offensive backs have a tendency to do this little leap at the line of scrimmage. This time, as he goes up over the top, he gets... He gets met there by uh, Calhoun, and I couldn't see who the linebacker was, either Kramer or Jacobs. May have been Guy Neal, Guy Neal. 88. We're going to take time out for commercial position number eight now. We hope you're enjoying these commercials. This is Turner Network Television. We're down five from the 10-yard line. We will check on the situation with Tom Wilkins. We do not know how seriously injured he is. There are the third down conversions today on the year. Florida on third down and short is 95%. They're about 70% here at third and five. But today, Kentucky's been stopping Florida down here with their backs to the wall. Kerwin Bell, plenty of time, hits Williams. He circled back short of the first down, but he may have gotten it. Let's just see where they spot it. Well, if they're short of the first down, Bob, I'd bet they'd go for it. It depends on the spot of the ball here. Kentucky thought they stopped him. 
They may have to bring the sticks in. Let's look at it again. Florida traditionally has gone to, this two, to the side of the two wide receivers with their goal line passing game. Both times against Kentucky, they've gone back to the weak side. Maurice Douglas comes, comes up and gets a nice shot on it. Now we're going to see a fourth down play. He was stopped short by about an inch. Penalty markers go down. There could have been a procedure call here. Let's just wait and see. Other than that, there is a first down. 11.58 to go, second quarter. Florida 6, Kentucky 3. As you hear, the marker is going against the Florida Gators. Many times in a goal line situation, Bob, the quarterback won't even say anything. They, they call it going on on the goose. When the quarterback gives pressure to the center, the center snaps the ball. That's the first penalty against Florida, and that's what happened. Good call, Tim Foley. You see Kerwin Bell give the pressure to the center there and tries to follow him through the hole for a first down, and it worked, but we're going to get a field goal now. Looks like a, about a 26, 27-yard field goal attempt. So far today, Raymond has been good on a 30, a 28. This will be a 27-yard field goal attempt. It's Florida 6, Kentucky 3. It's good, too, and Raymond is 3 out of 3. You're going to call it. Penalty here, Bob, I think, on Russell Harrison ran into the kicker. That could be a critical play, of course, because if he did, in fact, it could be enough for a first down. Now, they'll call running into or roughing. If it's running into, it's five yards, not an automatic first down. It would move down and give them that fourth down and inches over again. Let's just wait for the call. Jimmy Harper, the referee. I think it is running into the kicker. They're going to decline it and take the three. There's an old theory in football to never take points off the board. <laughs> and probably a wise one by former offensive coordinator, now interim head coach Galen Hall. Florida 10, uh, excuse me, Florida 9, Kentucky 3. This is Turner Network Television. Here's the penalty for running into the kicker. I don't know if running is the right word here, Tim. No, he's kind of, he's left his feet, and it's in, inadvertent contact with the kicker at that point, and the official's judgment, that was worth five yards. Bobby Raymond went ahead and hit the field goal anyway, and it is 9-3, Florida on three field goals. Kentucky's been tough inside their 20 today. That's Adams. And a penalty marker is down. He goes out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. So it's 9-3, Florida leading Kentucky with 11.45 to go, second quarter of play. Could be a clip call here. It is against Kentucky. That'll move them back. So about the 12. I don't imagine... Actually that, inside the 12, excuse me, Tim. Right. I don't imagine there's anyone in the country who does a better job with their kickoff team than Florida does. We've got a kicker that lays it down in there. There's a lot of... Hits it high. There's a lot of time to run down under the football. 85% of the time, they're stopping people inside their 15-yard line. And that is amazing. There's Jerry Claiborne. He picked up his 151st win of his career last Saturday when Kentucky defeated Vanderbilt's Commodores 27-18. First down, 10. Kentucky now from their own 10-yard line. This is where it is so tough against Florida. They're so used to forcing teams to start here. It's Adams. Close to the first down. I believe he got it. Out across the 20-yard line goes George Adams. White with a tackle. And here's a good look at that. Kentucky offensive line doing a job. C-71, Brad Myers, number 67, and Bruce Bozick get the cutoff on the backside. Then the Florida linebackers overran the football. It's always a good rule of thumb if you're a linebacker to stay behind the ball. Expect a cutback, especially, especially from a running back like George Adams. Now 22 Higgs and George Adams 33 in the lineup for Kentucky on a first and 10 from the 21-yard line for the Wildcats. Here's Adams. Gets about three yards out across the 20 to the 23. We're going back to our studios in Atlanta for this college football update. Georgia Tech at Wake Forest. This is Foy White. A little misdirection. Roll out. He finds Kevin Weisrich wide open in the end zone. Wake Forest takes it early. First quarter lead, 7 to nothing over Georgia Tech. Back to Bob. There's your time remaining in the second quarter. Score, Florida 9, Kentucky 3. Second down 8 from the 23 for the Wildcats. Quickly, close to the first down to tight end Oliver White, but he's going to be 
shy by about a yard. Oliver White, who bobbled the ball earlier on a potential first down catch, came out of the game. Lucas and Wheeler played. Now they've sent him back in. White has 14 catches coming into the game. This is his first today for a total of 15 on the year. It'll be third down less than a yard. And this is where it's tough to get by against the Florida Gators. Now, the Gators have the heat machines. They think it's cold. That's Nardoni, the short pooch punter. <laughs> hey, Tim Foley wants one of those. Get Ellison to get one of those things up here. <laughs> Power formation. And off. Adam. Following Derry, 44, the fullback, White and Eastman with the stop for Florida. So Kentucky just blew it right up the middle. Watch this. This is pure power football. Ken Petroiak's number 66, the center. Reich Wine, 69, 76, Vern Johnson. And Derry is probably the best blocking fullback in the Southeast Conference. Kind of an un unsung hero on this Kentucky football team. He gets people on the ground. First and 10 from the 38-yard line, Wildcats trailing 9-3, second quarter action. Here's Higgs. He gets out to the 41, unless they say his knee hit earlier, and they do. They say his knee went down at the 40. Keith Williams, 66, with a stop for Florida. Mark Higgs is a freshman, a true freshman, at 6,700 yards rushing in high school, and he's Mr. Excitement of this Kentucky offense. He started out the second half last week against Vanderbilt with an 84-yarder. He had 128 on the day against Vanderbilt. Second down eight. Wildcats from the 40-yard line of Kentucky. Sun starting to break out here at Commonwealth Stadium now. Ransdell to Higgs, and wham, down he goes. Alonzo Mitz. Met Higgs in the backfield. Higgs is just a little guy, 5'7", 185, and he was leveled, leveled by the 6'3", 260-pound Mitz. You saw Sybil sneak inside. Joe Kynes is going to make this call three or four times a game, and that's when he blitzes everybody. If he comes, he likes to come with everybody, and uh, there's just not enough Kentucky blockers to take on all the people that Florida had rushing on that play, and Higgs paid the price. Third down 11 from the 37-yard line. Randstall, four-man rush by Florida. Pops it out here for Burbage, but Burbage was covered very well. Matter of fact, double coverage by number eight Eastman and number two Adrian White. And now Calhoun comes in to punt once again. While he's getting ready to take the snap, we're going to pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is WXFL, Channel 8, Tampa, St. Petersburg. Paul Calhoun had a 17-yard punt last time out that gave up uh, enough drive on the part of Florida to get another three-point field goal. Let's see if he does better this time. He's averaging 45 on the year. This is a little better. It's short, too, though. Makes a good bounce. It's loose down there. Fall on by Kentucky. Did it touch a Florida player? The official is indicating no, it did not. Florida ball. Kentucky, on the chance that it touched Natil, fell on the ball. 8-10 to go, second quarter, Florida 9, Kentucky 3. Looks like the ball hits Natil. Watch it bounce up here. Watch his right hamstring when it bounces up. Here it comes up. There, it looks like it hit him. It changed the direction of the ball, but now watch it again from this angle, from the end zone. As a punt returner, major rule, don't let the ball hit the ground. If you decide not to catch the football, head for the sidelines, get away from it. Nothing good can happen. From that angle, it looked like it skidded by him. Very questionable. 8-10 to go, second quarter. Nevertheless, it remains in the possession of Florida. Very difficult to call. There is Galen Hall. He is wearing more orange every week. I wonder if that's indicative of the, of the head coaching. Everybody's talking about when will he be named officially head coach of Florida. It hasn't happened yet. Neil Anderson stopped at the line of scrimmage at the 24-yard line. It was a Boosters Club meeting in Florida, Tim, as you well know, and uh, there was word out of that Boosters Club meeting that uh, it was indicated by Athletic Director Bill Carr of Florida that Galen Hall had been offered the job as the new head coach. After that newspaper report, both Carr and, and Galen Hall and everybody else said that has not happened yet. I think most people who are in the know at Florida, from the officials to the fans, believe that that will, in fact, happen. But as of now, Galen Hall is still interim head coach of Florida. Second down, 10, Florida from the 24, three wideouts in the game. Irwin Bell, all time to throw. It's almost picked off. Bo 
Le'Veon Bell threw it behind the intended receiver Gary Roll, and it was almost snagged by Cam Jacobs. Looked like he was focused in on the receiver as he went for the ball. Got a back roll coming all the way across the field. Jacobs can't quite hold on. They made him a linebacker, but he still got the hands of a defensive lineman. Cam Jacobs, Carl Gables High School. That youngster's a real competitor. Third down, 10. Florida from the 24 of Florida. Bell. his way across the field the middle of the field is a dangerous place to throw the ball if you can't throw on time especially against the zone defense Calhoun has proven year after year he has a nose for the football first comes up down, with a big interception excuse me Tim first down 10 from the 32 yard line Phillips in motion 9-3 Florida leading Rasmus fakes the pitch under pressure over the middle it's incomplete intended for 81, Matt Lucas. It would have been a big gainer had Lucas been able to hold on. Should have caught it. It would have been tough, but he should have caught the ball. I think he would agree with that. Tough break here for Ransdell. Faked it left, ran right, and threw over the middle. Comes out with no protection as you see Reichwein pulling to the left. He had Joker Phillips down the middle of the field. Lucas dragging across shallow. Now number 87, Oliver White back in at tight end on second down 10 from the 32-yard line. Here's Ranzo, 3 of 7, 31 yards today. Wants to throw it again. It's the hit to Joker Joe Phillips for the 19-yard line. First down. The ball came loose, and it's Florida ball. The ball came loose, and Florida has taken it back. The ball belongs to the Gators at the 18-yard line. Let's watch the juggling that goes on here when number eight, Phillips, gets down there in traffic. Joe Phillips playing his last game here at Commonwealth Stadium. Makes a fine reception. Eastman comes over the top, can't knock it out. Now he's working his way back across the middle of the field. Mark Korf tears it out. And it looked like Pat Miller was the one that got on the football. Number 98, it was Pat Miller indeed, Tim. Got the ball well protected. Court, court yanks it out. Florida ball. First down, 10 Gators from the 18. Here's John L. Williams. Dives forward to the 22-yard line. Brian Williams will get credit for the stop of John L. Williams. We're going back to our studios in Atlanta now for another college football update. Surprising first quarter. Navy's ahead, 7 to nothing. But South Carolina comes back with this 13-yard pass. Gets down to the two-yard line with Quentin Lewis. Alan Mitchell snuck over a few plays later. It's tied up. First, second quarter, 7 to 7. Bob? 9-3 Florida leading Kentucky. Second down, 6 from the 22. I think we have ourselves a good game going on here at Commonwealth. Florida hammers it out to the 25. They need to get to the 29 for the first down. That was Lorenzo Hampton, tackled by John Shannon, number 91. That's the time remaining in the second quarter, six minutes plus. The longer this game goes on, the longer the, the outcome of this game is in question, the more Kentucky believes they can win. After watching the film of Florida versus Auburn and against Georgia, they had to, they had to feel a little bit insecure about their opportunity to come out with more points than Florida. Florida, third down three. They are three out of six on third down conversions today from their own 25-yard line. Bell, they pick up the blitz beautifully, and he completes it to John L. Williams for the first down and more. Gets a block. Hairston knocked out of the way. Williams finally down at the 45-yard line. John L. Williams with a 20-yard pass and run. Good job by that man who... The head coach, Jalen Hall, says he thinks is the best athlete out of the backfield. They're running out a couple of receivers deep, and this is just a little delay short. They had a delay in the weak side. Bell decides to dump it off. Kind of a zone pass. Hairston fights off a blocker. Get over to try to help on Williams. Finally, Stacy Burrell there to make the stop. This might be a time Florida in this drive may pick a time like this to go deep. It's first and 10 from the 45. They pitch it to Hampton, juggles the ball, gets a call on the right side. Mazza with the tackle number 38 for the Kentucky Wildcats. 
Sunshine coming through here in the overcast skies above Lexington, Kentucky. Temperature supposed to be up around 50. Was below freezing when we arrived this morning and was 40 degrees at game time. Usually once a half, Galen Hall will go into that bag and come up with a takeoff. We saw it against LSU. We saw it against Georgia. Reggie Corlew, 44, in at fullback for Florida now on a second and seven from 48. Here's Lorenzo Hampton going for a loss. Leading the way back there was Jerry Reese, 54, and 92, David Thompson. Talk about penetration. Reese is, the way Kentucky plays defense, Reese is supposed to be upfield. See him taking on Lomas Brown with his inside shoulder. David Thompson is kind of the inspirational leader of this defense, and he is really doing a job up front. Third down, 13 from the 44-yard line. Gators on their side of the field. Three wide receivers in there, Roll, Neal, and Mateel. Bell the throw. Under pressure. It is complete. Diving grab for the first down at the 33-yard line by Lorenzo Hampton, number seven. 24-yard pass reception. Under pressure, Bell just barely got out of the way before he was hit. They're bringing the wide receiver on a short inside route and bending Lorenzo Hampton to the outside behind Brian Williams. Fine throw by Kerwin Bell. Kerwin is now six out of nine for 108 yards. However, he does have one interception. No touchdowns today. First down, 10 Gators. They need 9 free, 320 to go in the first half. Wide open on the screen, uncovered is John L. Williams. And Williams gets inside the 20 to the 16 yard line. There was nothing over there but brown grass <laughs> and John L. Kentucky coming with the blitz. You see Jacob blitzing inside, spinning to avoid the block of Hampton. No one picks up the fullback. John L. Williams, Mazza pays for it as he comes over in pursuit. Frankie Neal leveled him. He spotted at the 17-yard line. First down, 10, Florida. Three wide receivers in there once again. Two split to the left, one to the right side. Bell's going to toss it. Under pressure, breaks loose. That's what he does so well. Slides down at the nine-yard line. He was under pressure against Georgia just last week. Broke loose and threw it into the end zone and got an interference call. And he does that so very well. That's the time remaining in the first half. And here's Kerwin Bell. Looks like he's going down here. Came up with a big play, as you mentioned, against Georgia in the same situation. Wilkins, he got Wilkins to leave his feet. Leapt into the air and then scooted around him and safe. They won't even have to teach him to do it, Matt, when he gets into the pros. He's getting that down good. Good job, Kerwin. Odom and Jones, double tight ends in for Florida now. They are number 82 and number 87. Roll the wide receiver. It is second down and two. Hand off Hampton. Stopped at the line. Twists loose. I don't know if he got the first down or not, though. Looks like he's short. The Wildcats are getting pretty feisty down there inside their 10-yard line. They had to pull one of them off the Florida player a moment ago. Frank Hare, the initial tackle. Cam Jacobs, second hit on that play. It'll be third down for Kentucky. They Cam, lead 9-3. Cam Jacobs comes from a family of athletes. He, he's even got a little sister, Cassie, who plays soccer at North Carolina. Well, his brother Chris, I think it was, who played here. That's correct. And you can bet his folks are probably here in this crowd today somewhere. wonder if they're as cold as I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's warm. It's getting to be a pleasant afternoon. Cam Jacobs coming over to the sideline here, talking to the coach on the side. I saw they brought in and stretched those sticks out there. It's third down and about a yard, third and a little less than a yard. So very big play here for Florida on the afternoon. Florida four out of seven on third down conversions. And wonder what Galen Hall, the offensive coordinator, will tell Galen Hall, the head coach, to call on this third down conversion. It was interesting talking to Galen after he found out about the situation with Charlie Pell. Remember, he called Joe Paterno, who was one of his college coaches, and said, hey, Joe, I don't know what's going to be happening here. I may need some work at the, after this season's over. And the fortunes of war have changed. And probably be named the head coach here at Florida. 
Third down, less than a yard from the seven of Kentucky. Power backfield. Here's the pitch to Neil Anderson. Anderson is stopped short of the first down. First hit, number 54, Jerry Reese. Cam Jacobs, Frank Hare also in on the play. Watch this Wildcat defense swarm. Good upfield by the defensive line. Reese turns the play back in, and Calhoun has been there on the goal line. He has been in the run support, been in the right hole, and has done an excellent job of making the stops. He was helped out by Dumbald and several other Wildcats. And once again, Kentucky has stopped Florida from getting into the end zone. Here comes a 25-yard field goal attempt by Bobby Raymond. He's hit a 30, a 28, and a 27 thus far. Now 48 seconds to go in the first half, and this will be the fourth field goal attempt of the day. And I believe they did not call timeout, and the 25-second clock expired. That is correct. Delay of the game, and it will be now a 30-yard field goal attempt. But for Bobby Raymond, he is so very accurate inside the 40, it may not matter. As a matter of fact, it gives him uh, a pretty good angle right in the middle of the field. Number 13 holding is punter Ray Criswell. There it is. He hits it cleanly and accurately. And four field goals in the first half for Bobby Raymond. And it is now 12 to 3. Florida with 43 seconds remaining. This is Turner Network Television. Three seconds remaining in the first half. Florida 12, Kentucky 3. And this Wildcat defense has been really tenacious inside the 20. Remember, Florida leads the conference in scoring. They average 31 points a game. Into the end zone. They're going to run the ball out. This is Logan. Good job on the return. He's out to the 25-yard line. Mark Logan. Sophomore from Lexington gets it out before he's tackled by 28, Lindsey Smith. Two seconds remaining in the first half of play. Certainly enough time for Rand still to do a little bit of damage, maybe get him down in field goal position. From the 25-yard line. Ransville making sure of the call, possibly an audible. After he looks at the Florida defense, here comes the blitz. Throws it incomplete. His tight ends just aren't catching the ball for him today. They've tried all three of them. White, Lucas, and Wheeler have been in there, and they're just not holding on to the ball. All of them have dropped a ball. That's three in a row. White, Lucas, and Wheeler. They are dividing it equally. One th one there's thing the scoring play, 69 yards, 11 plays. Took six minutes, 11 seconds, and the 30-yard field goal by Bobby Raymond. On the second down, 10, this is Adams. To the 28, down he goes, tackled by Arthur White, 43 to linebacker. One thing that Ransel does that's a little unusual, most quarterbacks either come out with their shoulders turned to the right or come out straight back. Every once in a while, you'll see Bill Ransel come out turned to the left. And, uh, in talking to Jerry Eisman, it's just so he can get better, better vision on his weak side read. I haven't seen it before. It's kind of unusual, but he does it well. 22 Higgs in the backfield, but it won't matter because the clock ran down. Florida had the ball 19 minutes, Kentucky 11 minutes in the first half. And that's the end of the first half. Florida unable to score a touchdown, but they have four field goals and lead by a score of 12 to 3. This is Turner Network Television. Come up empty six straight years against Georgia. And now they would face the Bulldogs with a freshman quarterback at the helm. But Kerwin Bell is no ordinary freshman. On the Gators' second drive, Bell looked like a veteran as he read the Georgia defense and called an audible at the line of scrimmage. The result? A 25-yard scoring strike to tailback Lorenzo Hampton, and the Gators were on their way. Following a Georgia turnover, Florida was faced with a third and goal from the eight. But Bell's heady play continued as he used his athletic ability to avoid his sack and draw an interference penalty in the end zone. From there, Neil Anderson did the rest with this two-yard touchdown leap. Then came the play that broke Georgia's back. After the Gator defense stopped the dogs on this fourth and goal, Bell found his team faced with a third and seven at their own four. But the freshman coolie found Ricky Natil down the sideline. A 96-yard touch as University of Kentucky here and also 
dominating time of possession, 19 minutes to 11 minutes, but the score, 12-3, four Florida field goals, one by Kentucky, and you can figure out very quickly that one touchdown by Kentucky or Florida, and this game could either get lopsided Gator way or very close for the Wildcats, and they're going to have the opportunity for some offensive movement as they take this second-half kickoff. Hop to George Adams at the four. Adams out to the 24-yard line. Sunshine has joined us here in Lexington during halftime, and it'll warm up down on the field. We, of course, are here in the shade, and it is still quite chilly, about 40 degrees in Lexington, Kentucky. It was down to the low 20s overnight. Let's see if Kentucky decides to do anything differently offensively here. They're going to start with Ransdell at quarterback again, of course. George Adams in the backfield, along with Mark Higgs, number 22. Higgs is the little scat back at tailback. Play fake. Ransdell looking for somebody. Tried to fire it in there, and it just short hopped. You can see the outstanding coverage. Arthur White, the man back there on the play at the 37-yard line, tried to get it to Mark Higgs in the middle. Great coverage by the secondary of Kentucky. Fine job of coverage by the Florida secondary here, and also a good job of protection by the Kentucky offensive line. Look at Tom Ritchie there holding out those Florida pass rushers. Ransdell tried to get it back to Burbage. Uncatchable. It'll be second down 10 from the 24. Cisco Bryant in at receiver along with Eric Pitts. Bryant 19, Pitts 83. Bryant in motion. Ransdell, protection from a four-man rush. Dumps it off to Derry. Derry to the 30-yard line fumbles. They say, however, he was down. It will remain in the possession of Kentucky. Roger Sibble, the man who fell on the ball, 25, but it was after the whistle had sounded. The ball remains in the possession of Kentucky. It will be third down five from the 30. Chris Derry, as you mentioned earlier, Bob, caught six passes against Vanderbilt. Earlier in the year, he wasn't considered a pass receiver. And that was close right there. It didn't really look like Chris Derry was down. It is third down four from the 30-yard line. Ransdell again protected well, but having trouble finding receivers. Almost picked off, incomplete out at the 40-yard line. Once again, trying to dump it off to anybody he can find. They floated Derry out there again, but Sybil was all over him. Kentucky cannot convert, and the Wildcat has a frown on his face. If you think that's an unusual picture, you should see my sidekick, Tim Foley. He is a vision. He has on his flight jacket, his Snoopy ears, his plaid blanket, a vision here in the booth. <laughs> Paul Calhoun has been having a rough day punting, had one for only 17 yards. Hits this one from his 20. A little better, but still not a great punt. Bounces loose, and the teal gets out of the way and gets a Kentucky roll down to the 24. So a very effective job of punting that time for Paul Calhoun. And Florida will have a little more than 75 yards to go to try to get on the board again. Where in the opening moments of the second half of play, Florida 12, Kentucky 3. Most of these stations will be carrying the Hall of Fame Bowl on December 29th. Last year, Kentucky played West Virginia in that telecast that Tim and I were pleased to bring you. This year, some of the names being mentioned, Kentucky, of course, Tennessee, Virginia, Maryland, possibly even, possibly even the alma mater, Timothy Foley of Purdue. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know if I could stand <laughs> First down, 10 Gators from the 24. What a great job those folks do with the Hall of Fame bowl. Here's Neil Anderson, to the 30. They know how to do football in Alabama. Neil Anderson being aided up there by his teammates with 13.32 to go in quarter number two. And there's the, the man that I said was the vision. Look at Tim Foley. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you, could you work with this? <laughs> I, I... Requisition this uh, blanket from the Angelusi family. They looked up here, saw my blue lips, and gave me a blanket. <laughs> Second down, five Gators from the 30-yard line. Nobody ever gives me anything. <laughs> John L. Williams. from Newport, Kentucky. A major turnover. Remember, the score is Florida 12, Kentucky 3. David Thompson, 92. 
stuffs the offensive lineman, drags down Williams, but look at him fight. He continues to fight and scramble. Somebody comes along, knocks the ball out, and you're right. Kramer gets on it. Kentucky offense has to do something with this opportunity. From the 32-yard line, Wildcats. Ransdell. It is a first down. They tried the same play on the turnover in the first half. It was dropped by the other tight end. Same opportunity. Both linemen pulling to the strong side, to the side of the fake. Wheeler works his way open, dragging back across the formation. From the 21, and these Wildcat fans are warming up now. Florida's defense is incredibly tough inside the 20. Here's George Adams. You see an example of that right now. There are orange gators all over him. Miller's the man number 98 you see getting up, but also down there was big Tim Newton, the 285-pound nose guard. Miller has played himself a game, game today as Galen Hall looks on. Has to be a little bit concerned. I know one thing they talked about in the locker room was his offense's inability to score when they had the opportunity, get in the end zone. Second down, 10. Wildcats from the 21 of Florida. Two receivers split wide to the left side in a slot left formation. Here's Ransdell under pressure. Gets it away from Miller. Phillips completed the 15 yard line. Game of one six. Joker Phillips. He caught one right there earlier and fumbled it. Held on to it this time. Joker coming in motion as the ball is snapped. Florida, full blitz. He works himself open, working against Adrian White, and makes the catch in traffic. He caught a touchdown pass last week against Vandy, an eight-yard slant pattern, not afraid to go over the middle. 19 Bryant, 83 pitch in at the wide receiver position. This is third down four from the 15 of the Gators. It's complete to Bryant, and out of bounds he goes. Let's see where they're going to spot the reception. He needed to get to about the 11 for the first down, and I think it could be short. It is short by a yard, and the Wildcats are going to go for it. Situation earlier in the short yardage. They try to get the ball Adams to Adams going sideways. The, look for some straight ahead momentum here. Straight T formation. They'll spot the ball at the 10 yard line. First and goal. Look at that blocking by Reichwine and Petroiak. Clearing the way. Derry sticks his nose in there. Helps widen that hole a little bit more. First and goal from the 10-yard line. It's just barely outside the 10. Higgs. To the 6-yard line goes Mark Higgs, the freshman from Owensboro. It's 12-10 Florida. 10.45 to go third quarter, but these Wildcats on the fumble recovery have driven to the six-yard line. Up closer to the seven where they spot the ball. Higgs goes out of the game. Derry goes back into the game. And Burbage comes back into the game for Pitts. Burbage is a very physical wide receiver. Second down seven on a wing to the left is George Adams, number 33. Ransdell. Some time. Kentucky seniors playing their last game here in Commonwealth. Joe Phillips is one of them. He's had a fine career as a Kentucky Wildcat, finishing it on the right note here. Morley for the point after. This is a critical point after, of course. Kentucky 12, a 10, 
Florida 12, a two-point lead by the Gators. And let's look at the pass again from the end zone angle. Phillips had come in motion back toward the line of scrimmage. Look at this protection. He is not the primary receiver. Ransdell finds him open as he works clear of the linebacker. Beautifully thrown football. That was Ransdell's 10th touchdown of the year, the fourth TD catch by Phillips. Florida 12, Kentucky 10. Stay with us. We've got a barn burner in Lexington. This is Turner Network Television. <laughs> by two to Florida in the middle of the third quarter. The fans on their feet and all the players on their feet as Kentucky kicks off. Nateel to the 27-yard line, 28-yard line. And let's take a look at the touchdown angle once again from field level, Tim. Watch Bill Ransdell here. He's been hurried and beaten as a quarterback all year long by opposing defensive linemen. Look at that tremendous protection afforded to him on this play, and Phillips hangs on to the football for a touchdown. Well, now remember the Gators are second in the conference in total offense, and they are first in scoring offense. There's the yardage, 32 yards. The reason it was a 32-yard drive is that Florida's John L. Williams fumbled on his 32. It was recovered by linebacker Jeff Kramer of Kentucky and then taken in by the Wildcat offense. Hand off to the fullback Williams, breaking through for two and three to the 33-yard line. Steve Mazza with the tackle for the Wildcats. This Gator offense can get untracked here. This may have gotten their attention. They've been a little flat today. Well, they've only been flat inside the 10-yard line. They've moved the ball effectively during the entire game. Jerry Claiborne, SEC Coach of the Year last year, Co-Coach of the Year. Illustrious history as a coach. Tremendous tradition that he's established here. Second down, six. Here's Lorenzo Hampton. To the 41 yard line first down gators florida going for their first ever southeastern conference title either a share or outright if they win this game florida could get no less than a tie for the title depending on what lsu does with mississippi state today and of course next tuesday the southeastern conference executive board will meet to decide on whether to take away a southeastern conference championship should should the gators win it and take away the right to go to a bowl but that won't happen until next tuesday right now the gators are after winning a championship hampton hit behind the line initial hit by number 48 cam jacobs frank hair upfield the, the wildcats have been a problem for the gators traditionally and one reason is because they follow in the schedule auburn and georgia Tremendously emotional game against Auburn for Florida and the big one against Georgia. And they come here, it's always kind of scary because this, obviously, Kentucky is not the quality team as Auburn or Georgia. Second down, 10 from the 41 for Florida. Bell, plenty of time. It's Williams. Williams, extra yardage for the first down inside Kentucky territory. That play has been open time after time today. The drag player, the delay pass over to the side to the fullback. And it will continue to be open until Kentucky is in man-to-man -man coverage. You see Kramer breaking on the ball as it's thrown. Calhoun sneaking up there close. Mazza makes the first hit. Kentucky will shut that off when they blitz. Of course, when you blitz now, you're leaving your outside people man-to-man -man on folks like Frankie Neal and Ricky Nateel and Ray McDonald. Williams has 53 yards receiving, 67 running. Here's Bell under pressure, complete to John L. Williams again. He goes down, short of the first down at the 40-yard line of Kentucky. Brian Williams with the stop. Defensively, Terry Strzok, the defensive coordinator for Kentucky, has got to feel like the major goal, the major objective is to prevent the big play. That's what broke Auburn's back, and it's what broke Georgia's back, the big play. If they can make them drive the ball down the field and pull them to a field goal, they're in good shape. It's 12-10, Florida. 7.30 to go, third quarter. High formation this time. Here's the handoff to John L. Williams. Gets the first down just outside the 35. Williams now. Brian Williams with his fifth tackle of the day. The defensive right end for Kentucky. And the Gators keep their drive alive. We're going to pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is WXFL, Channel 8, Tampa, St. Petersburg. Florida with four field goals. 
Kentucky with one field goal and a touchdown pass. Ransdell to Joe Phillips. First down from the 36. Bell with all kinds of protection. Incomplete. Good hit on Williams. They finally brought up the nickelback, Maurice Douglas, to cover the fullback out of the backfield. I guess if you're Galen Hall, Tim, you just keep going to that well as long as you can get a bucket of water. I think that makes good sense. It's how they started the game, Bob. They gave the ball to Williams. He went 32 yards. They came back with the same play. And until they stop it, why not keep coming with it? It's not a high risk. You got a high percentage of success on that particular play. That time, Maurice Douglas responded to the ball in the air and drilled Williams. On a second down, 10 from the 36 of Kentucky. Five defensive backs in it for Kentucky again. Here's a draw to Williams. He has running room. Driven out of bounds at the 23 after Williams gets the first down. Gordon Jackson with the stop that time. Let's watch Kentucky. As Reese and Frank Hare cross the linebacker upfield, they seem to stymie Williams for momentarily. The young man's got quick feet, found the opening, and took it downfield before he ran into Gordon Jackson. Total offense for John L. Williams today, 144 yards receiving and running. First and 10 from the 23. Here's Hampton cutting against the grain. <laughs> Little Brian Williams had a hold on him and just wouldn't let go until he got some help. Brian Williams, number two, is only 5'10", 200 pounds. Well, both Williams and Maz on the outs outside are more like defensive backs than they are like linebackers, but they're both big play people. Now, this will be second down and nine, and once again, the Gators are finding it tough here when they get down close to the 20-yard line. Quick substitution, Russell Hairston goes into the game. Coming out of the game very quickly is Cam Jacobs. Does he get off? Yes. Second down, nine from the 23. Right up the middle, Hampton. Close to the first down. He goes down to the 13-yard line. Hairston with the tackle. Kentucky's defense was simply not set. They got a substitution in there just before the snap of the ball. Second and nine. Obviously, they're expecting a pass. Florida comes with the draw. Harrison is in there replacing Cam Jacobs. Obviously, if you're anticipating a run, you'd like to have Cam Jacobs in the game. Just exactly what the Wildcat defense didn't need was that substitution, but that could even have been a checkoff, possibly. Corlew and Hampton in the backfield now for Florida. Third down in just inches. They run it right up the middle to the 10-yard line with Corlew. First down, Gators. Now, they've been down here before. Florida has not scored a touchdown in this game today. Florida has four field goals and leads 12-10 with 5.30 remaining in third quarter. Game of four, first down, Florida. Obviously, Terry Strzok, defensive coordinator for Kentucky, outmanned in this situation, knew that he had to move his people around, had to come up with something uh, just in terms of strategy because man for man, Florida's a better team than Kentucky is. Here is Hampton to the four. Lorenzo Hampton, and now the Gators just hammering away with that inside game in between the tackles. The offensive line starting to really do a good job along with John L. Williams out of the fullback position. Watch that one. John L. Williams on Guy Neal clears away for Lorenzo Hampton. In saying that Florida is better man for man, Kentucky just puts Kentucky in the same group as just about every other team in the country. Florida is awesome on offense. Second down, goal from the five. Hold him in motion. Hampton. Twisting to about the two-yard line. It'll be third down. Talk about a goal line stand here. Let's see what the Wildcats do. They had Jacobs out that play. They send him back in this play. Cam Jacobs playing with a cracked rib today, wearing a flak jacket. You can see it on number 48 underneath his jersey. That is not a flak jacket on Coach Hall there. That's just his warmth. <laughs> now, Galen Hall is keeping the calls more inside in this particular situation. Before, they're trying to run a little farther outside the backs now are looking upfield third and goal from the two Anderson leaping does not get in the end zone Anderson scored there now they can possibly get a first down they don't have to go into the end zone for the first down it's very close to that but they can spot the ball here and award Florida a first down they may bring the sticks in and measure going to be fourth and etches and they are going to go for it. All three of them
those running backs in there, double tight ends. Anderson. Does not score. Let's see if they got the first down. Calhoun. Calhoun was coming over the top, Bob. He left the ground before Anderson did. He had sold out. And that's the only way that you're going to stop Florida in this area. He came up with a tremendous effort. Are they measuring it? They are not measuring, apparently. Well, I'm sure that's what Galen Hall is concerned about. They've got to about. say bring the sticks in. Yeah. It is very close to a first down. It is short of a first down. A goal line stand by Jerry Claiborne's Wildcats. There's Cam Jacobs, the man in the middle with his sore ribs today. What a job he's done. It is Florida 12, Kentucky 10, Wildcat ball. It is Florida 19, Kentucky 10, 2-10 to go. Third quarter, this is Turner, Network Television. A little over two minutes remaining in the third quarter at Commonwealth Field in Lexington, Kentucky. Florida Gators 19, Kentucky 10. Look at the hang time on that kickoff. George Adams at his nine. They say it went out of bounds at the 21-yard line. That's where it will be Kentucky football. Kentucky with a great goal line stand, but on the first play from the line of scrimmage at their own one-yard line, Ransdell threw an interception to Jarvis Williams at the 15, and Florida took it in to score. Next week, we'll be in Jackson, Mississippi, for one of the oldest traditional rivalries in the country, the Mississippi State Bulldogs and the Rebels of Ole Miss. That'll be a sellout and a Thanksgiving weekend spectacular from Jackson. That kickoff hung in the air more than five seconds. On the first down 10, here comes Mark Higgs. A little 5'7 running back, no place to go. Six white-clad, jersey-clad Florida Gators were over there to make the stop. Florida's defense is fast. One of the coaches we talked to earlier this year, I guess it was George's offensive coordinator, George Hafner, he said, one thing you got to know when you play against the Florida defensive team is whatever you do offensively, you have to make it happen fast because they pursue so well. They turn it up, they turn it in so quickly. And that's a good point to bring up. I, in talking to Joe Kynes, when you ask him to describe almost any one of his players, you ask him what he does best, and he says, well, he gets to the ball, he's fast. Ranzel on second down. It's complete, close to the first down to Mark Wheeler, the tight end. See where they spot the ball. Looks like they're gonna say he was short. I think he will be just short of the first down. Ransdell is very effective against the zone. Come out, comes out to his left so he can get a better read. He had Derry to go to. Decides he wants Wheeler. Pops it in there. They're going to bring the sticks into measure here. Looks to be just a little bit short of the first down. 104 to go third quarter. A nine-point lead for the Gators. 19-10. to 10. There they stretch it out. As you see, this is... Talk about the game of inches today. The first downs have been made or not made on just inches. That one was a first down, Kentucky. Gary Claiborne has caused these Wildcats to believe in themselves. Seven and two coming into this game. They're obviously headed to another bowl. What kind of bowl and what kind of payoff depends on whether the Wildcats can beat Florida here today or Tennessee next week. You see offensive line coach there, Jake Hallams, standing there. From the 31-yard line, first down. Here's a reverse. Played well. Joker Phillips is going to throw it. Wide open. George Adams at the 50. Adams to the 43. Roger Sybil with the tackle. That was what you call your all-time almost. Florida was back there to try to break up the reverse, the flea flicker. Pennington, the man who made the penetration. But Joker Joe completed the pass to George Adams. Well, Jerry Eisman said he was going to pull out all the stops today. Ransel tries to help out. We got a, we had a face mask penalty if this pass hadn't, hadn't been complete. But Phillips throws a nice ball down there to George Adams. Gets Kentucky and Florida territory. 
And now, by the way, Adams has just broken Kentucky's record for all-purpose yardage in a season, breaking Dickie Lyon's 1967 record of 1,413 yards with this reception from Joe Phillips. It is first down 10 from the 39, Kentucky. They trail by nine. Here's Higgs. He's been trying to break him loose all day. He gets to the 35, and down he goes. Higgs, as Tim told you earlier, had an 84-yard run and 128 yards against Vanderbilt last week. He can get outside, and he is the breakaway threat, so they'll keep hammering at him, hoping he can find a seam eventually. That's the end of the third quarter, and the Wildcat crowd, very enthusiastic as Kentucky is marching on Florida, trailing 19-10. to 10. This is Turner Network Television. First half for Alan Pinkett. Here he scores his fourth touchdown of the day, 161 yards rushing, 26 carries, and Notre Dame surprisingly easily over Penn State, 31 to 7 half. We were talking about uh, South Carolina being a potential Orange Bowl visitor. First, they got to get past Navy at Annapolis. The midshipman leading 14-7 at halftime. Boston College also trailing at Syracuse. They're another Sugar Bowl contender and, a, and, a, and an Orange Bowl contender. West Virginia leading Temple 10-7. That's the second quarter score. And here, Florida 19, Kentucky 10. Most did not think it would be this close, but Kentucky has been tenacious. Take away two turnovers for Kentucky, and the Wildcats could be in the lead in this game. Of course, as a lot of folks say, what could have happened happened. Second down six, Kentucky. Well! Florida was ready to begin the fourth quarter, that's for sure. Mark Higgs is leveled by Roger Sibbald, and now let's go to... Now we have an update on that Navy-South Carolina game. It is now Navy 21, South Carolina 7. Gamecocks undefeated going into that game. That last play by Florida's defense, that was another one of those Joe Kynes rockets. That's the third time they've all-out blitzed this Wildcat offense. Third down eight from the 33. Kentucky, Joe Phillips in motion. Here comes the blitz again. Ransdell tried to get it away. Couldn't get it going. Will they call intentional grounding or not? I see no flag here. At any rate, if he does not, it will bring up fourth down. The quarterback pressure from 98 Miller and Alonzo Mitz. They just virtually had him wrapped up. There's the yellow penalty, and the wave means call it off. It is not a flag. Inadvertent marker, I believe, is the correct terminology. Here's the replay on it. Ransdell is at his best when he has no pressure, like most quarterbacks. But he does an exceptional job of reading zoned, and his receivers have a knack for finding the open space. That time, he was hurried. He didn't really have a chance to set up. There's going to be a 55-yard field goal attempt by Joe Worley. His longest has been 50, which he tied today. He had a 50 earlier against Virginia. He's going to have another 50-yarder here. Now, if you're the Florida defense, you're playing pass coverage on a 55-yard field goal. I said Virginia. I meant Vanderbilt, of course. 54 yards. Plenty of distance. No, wide to the left. It hooked off to the left. No good, and the score remains Florida 19, Kentucky 10. the Wildcats miss the 54-yarder and Galen Hall holds on here with a nine-point lead, 14 minutes, 12 seconds to go, and with Kentucky's defense being on the field as much as they've been today, you might expect the Wildcat defense to start wearing down here, and you might expect Galen Hall and Kerwin Bell to keep hammering that ball on the ground, eating up the clock, six, eight minutes on a drive. That's what I'm sure they would like to do. As of yet, Galen Hall hasn't bombed him, and it seems like in every game, Kerwin Bell comes up with a pass for over 50 yards. And this is a part of the field a lot of teams like to try that. They're at the 37-yard line. They hand off to Lorenzo Hampton. Hampton gets it to the 45-yard line, tackled by Don Urano. Number 39, in left inside linebacker for Kentucky. I think we need to point out the fact that Scott Trimble is doing a fine job in that great wall of Florida, replacing Jeff Zimmerman. Zimmerman, the mammoth offensive guard for Florida, has had back problems all week long, was in the infirmary for two days, and Trimble moved from tackle to guard, 
Doing a good job in there. Second down, two from the 45-yard line. Out of the eye. Here comes Lorenzo Hampton again. First down. Right to the 48-yard line goes Lorenzo Hampton, number seven. Hampton up uh, around the 50-yard mark, exactly 50 on the day. John L. Williams has been the real power runner and receiver. He's 84 yards running and 61 catching the ball today. Kerwin Bell is 10 out of 14 for 152 yards, one touchdown, one interception. I'm going to bring the chains in to see if he got the first down. Looked to me as though he did, but we'll find out in just a moment. As you set up your defensive game plan, first down for Florida. As you set up for your defensive game plan, you'd like to take away the, the thing the other team does best. Usually it's one player or a set of specific plays. What would you take away from Florida? You take away the tailback, you get a John L. is going to kill you. You try to take away the, the fullback, you throw the ball. First down 10 from the 48. Well, to Hampton. Barely tripped up close to the first down. Galen Hall has won six in a row since coming in as interim head coach here. The rumors are that he's going to be named. There's a penalty marker down. That he's going to be named head coach and may, in fact, already been offered a contract and turned down a contract. He says that's not true, but they are talking. We asked him to tell us about his feelings about what is going on with the head coaching job at Florida. Well, Bob, right now there's not, nothing definite yet. Uh, we have talked, we have conferred, we, we, you know, with uh, the athletic department, but uh, and the president. But there, there's not, nothing definite yet. Uh, you know, r right now, between now and tomorrow, the most important thing is, is a football game, and that, that's the way we're going to approach it. So there you go. I believe the call was offsides. Florida making it first down 15. Now back at their 43-yard line. on the draw. But quick acceleration on the part of John L. Williams. He is 5'11", 220 pounds from Palatka. And as Galen Hall has said, and as I've repeated the last couple of weeks, Galen Hall says he is the best athlete in the backfield. And when you say that, remember you're talking about uh, Neil Anderson who has a 38-inch vertical leap at one tailback position. Lorenzo Hampton, who is a complete player. He blocks, catches, and runs. And he says John L. is the best of all three. Athletically. Second down five. From the 47. Hampton. To the 20-yard line. Lorenzo Hampton may have heard my comment. So he pops that one for 27 yards up the middle. Hampton now with 77 yards on the afternoon. And this Gator rushing game starting to really rack up the yardage. Lorenzo Hampton, the quick feet, finds the opening to the backside. Neal misses in the hole. Jacobs can't hang on. Russell Harrison chase, chasing him down from behind. 11.50 remaining in the game. Florida 19, Kentucky 10. It's at the 20-yard line of the Wildcats. Reverse. Nateel. They're staying at home, though. Brian Williams is there to make the play. No game. Brian Williams with his ninth tackle of the afternoon and a very intelligent, experienced play, stays at home, stops Nateel on the reverse. And now to Atlanta for a college football update. Thank you, Bob. After a big win over Florida State, South Carolina is suffering an emotional letdown against Navy. Here they cannot tackle Rich Klaus as he goes 53 yards for a touchdown. This is why Navy is leading South Carolina 21-7. Back to Bob and Tim. It is second down nine from the 19. The ball batted down by Brian Williams. Another great defensive play. Brian Williams has had himself an exceptional afternoon for the Kentucky Wildcat defensive unit. This might have been called at the line of scrimmage. Wickman looked like he'd been given a lot of room there. Turned his body to the inside, ready for the quick delivery from Bell. Williams leaps into the air. Every time we've seen Kentucky play, we've seen that young man, Brian Williams, coming up with some big plays. Well, the Gators have certainly had a hard time when they get down near the 20. Third down nine from the 19 of Kentucky. A passing play. Here comes a blitz. Bell gets it away. Incomplete. Under pressure. He couldn't find Gary Roll. And Bell is down. And getting up very slowly. 
Cam Jacobs having a few things to say to Kerwin as Kerwin collects himself from the turf. Looks like he's all right, but he certainly had his bell rung, and that was no intended a poor pun. The quarterback is kind of in an indefensible position as he releases the football, and that time Kerwin Bell took a real shot from Cam Jacobs. He tried to lay it out there. Florida receiver running to the corner. 36-yard field goal attempt now by Bobby Raymond. It would be his fifth of the day if he connects. Which he does. Florida 22, Kentucky 10. Five field goals from the foot of Bobby Raymond this afternoon. This is Turner Network Turner. SEC title if they can hold on to their 22 to 10 lead over the Kentucky Wildcats. George Adams from the five. Another good job of running that ball out by George Adams. He stepped out of bounds at the 29-yard line. And the ball should be just about in play in Starkville, Mississippi right now as LSU takes on Mississippi State. LSU needs a victory there to be co-champions with Florida if the Gators hold on here. If LSU does not win today, then Florida could hold on and become the SEC undisputed champions until that executive committee meets next week on the part of the SEC to decide whether or not to strip Florida of their SEC championship should they win it and or a trip to the Sugar Bowl. Here's Ransom to Logan on the side. as running room. Logan close to the first down and wrestled out of bounds in front of the Kentucky bench. Georgia and Auburn play tonight, but if Florida wins here today or LSU wins, that game will be moot in terms of the SEC championship. A little bit of mix-up down there in front of the bench, but I don't think anything is going to get out of control. So the Georgia-Auburn game could be just a game for rivalry tonight if Florida or LSU wins. Look at George Adams. What a remarkable career he's had here, not only as an, a productive ball carrier, but as a leader. When Higgs is in the football game, George Adams becomes the blocking back, and that takes a little bit of humility and a lot of team spirit. First and 10 from the 20. Play action. Ransdell. It's complete to Derry. Derry driving down the sideline, out of bounds at the 42 of Florida, and these Wildcats are not finished yet. There's plenty of time left in the game, 10-55. Florida leads by 12, but the Wildcats have shown the ability to move the ball this afternoon. Little play action here. They found out Derry can catch the football. In an earlier game, he was often open, and he was just kind of ignored, and defenses were beginning to ignore him. And that's probably why he caught six against Vanderbilt last week. And today, Derry has two catches. First and 10 from the 42. Tom Weary in at fullback right now, number 29. Draw play, George Adams. About a yard, not much more. Tim Newton with a stop, yard and a half. Uh, other SEC action today. I mentioned Georgia and Auburn will play tonight in Auburn, Alabama. Alabama is at Cincinnati. LSU at Mississippi State. Tennessee playing at Ole Miss. That game uh, just about to get underway also. That's being played at Oxford and or at Ole Miss. I'm not sure if it's in Jackson or Oxford. And uh, Virginia Tech is playing at Vanderbilt this afternoon. Big uh, bowl possibility game for the Vanderbilt Commodores. They need the victory over Virginia Tech to be in the running for one of the bowl bids. There are 18 Division I bowls this year. Second down eight, Ransdell. Popped into the air as Ransdell is driven to the ground. And Sybil was probably closest to the ball. Penalty markers are down also back at the point of contact. Let's take a look and see here. Moten looks to be involved in it, Tim Foley. Arthur White also on the blitz there. There's just not enough people to pick up the blitz on that, and that's a little rough uh, play there. I think that was that was Ronnie Moten there. That, that was a little extracurricular, old Ron. Hit those quarterbacks, get your name in the paper. Don't mess with their head. Now that's a that's a that's a penalty that I've never quite understood. Right. Yeah. Somebody, if you're going to call offsetting, don't call it at all because what's the point? Right. Yeah. <laughs> There's no fine involved. Third down nine from the 40. Of course, it's not the officials' fault. They call whatever the rules call for them to. And once again, Ransdell goes down under an all-out blitz by Florida. 
Kentucky may have to get rid of the ball here. You know, I never have been much for defensive players. If you make a great play, fine. But, you know, if you come clean on the blitz, that's because you got 10 other guys in your defense working to do their job. So you standing there and dancing up and down and sticking your hands up in the air and all that kind of stuff, drawing attention to yourself, I don't understand that in, in a team sport. Because when you succeed, the team succeeds. If you fail, the team fails. So, you know, the individual, has, you know, really there's no place for the individual in the game of football. You remember those short shirts we saw at Georgia? Big team, little me. Penalty marker dropped. I believe the time expired, and they're going to back up Kentucky five more yards for the Calhoun punt, which won't make much of a problem. Matter of fact, could aid him in getting the ball down inside the 20. I always liked uh, what Bear Bryant had to say. Now they've changed the... Uh, Florida has changed the way they're going to receive this punt. They have a punt return team on here, and Ricky McTeel goes back deep because they think he'll have an opportunity. He is second in the nation in returning punts. But Bear Bryant always said, hit them, smile at them, Pick him up and tell him you'll be right back. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a fake. This is Burbage. First down. Paul Calhoun, who has done such a good job all year of running off of the fake punt, off of the punt formation, this year threw the ball for the first down to the 28. Nice job of faking there. Took a couple of steps, forced that rush to come inside, and delivered it to Burbage on the outside. If that tackle had been made, he wouldn't have made the first down. Good running by Burbage. taking a beating. You know, the way that Florida blitz works out, it's almost best to block it like a field goal. Forget trying to block a man. Block an area. Make yourself as wide as you can. There's just not enough folks to block everybody. You got the, the strong safety coming clean, and whoa, poor Billy Randall's been taking some shots here. Second down goal from the eight now. Bryant comes out of the ball game. Cisco Bryant. We have 83 pits in at wide receiver along with Phillips. Phillips goes in motion. Ransdell rolling to get away from the blitz. Has a man. Touchdown. Well, the Wildcats have closed to 16 to 22. This time they come with the same blitz, Bob. Jerry Iceman wisely calls a play that gets Ransdell out of the pocket, trying to save him from taking those shots. And Joker Joe Phillips comes down with a fantastic one-handed grab. Gets these Wildcats within striking range. Here's Joe Worley for the point after. It's good. Florida 22. Kentucky 17, Phillips with two touchdown receptions on the day, five on the year, and Phillips is having a good day. It's a close one. Stay with us. That set up the touchdown. Most punters don't have the poise to take a couple of steps and fake it. If you're on the punt return team, all you're looking is at for the first two steps, and then you're going about your assignment. We're about ready for the kickoff here, and there's no telling what to expect. Worley hits it deep and high. Kicks it over the head of Anderson, who is back. And Anderson touched it and will touch it down in the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Let's look at some scores here now from college football action around the country. This late December, Georgia Tech out in front of Wake Forest. That being played in North Carolina. It's 17-7. NC State leading Duke by three in the second quarter. 
Indiana and Purdue tied 14-14. Big interstate rivalry with Tim's alma mater all knotted up at the moment of the second quarter. Being Purdue, of course, Brigham Young in Utah, 7-7. That's somewhat of a surprise. Brigham Young undefeated of the season. Alabama out in front of Cincinnati, second quarter, 7-0. And here, Florida 22, Kentucky 17, 9-11 to go in the game. Gators ball from their 20. They're going to try to run it just like that. Anderson to the 25. Close to the 25. Last time Florida had to do this, following the Kentucky score, they drove it right downfield and scored a touchdown. A very poised offensive football team. I think a very tight group, simply because all the things that they, they've been through. And for, for a while, in the newspapers and in the media, they were the only friends they seemed to have. And so they grew very close together. Second down five from the 25. And off the fullback, John L. Williams. Up close to the 30, to the 29, Cam Jacobs with the stop for the Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky has scored on an eight-yard TD pass from Ramsdale to Phillips. Kentucky scored on a seven-yard pass from Ramsdale to Phillips. And the field goal for Warren. This crowd's on their feet on this third down one. 8-12, and everybody's on their feet. it end over end. Here's Pitts. Going to let it bounce. Not a wise decision. You got to wonder about that one. Pitts lets it bounce down inside the 25 to the 23 yard line. But these Wildcats trail 22 to 17. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the game. This is Turner Network Television. All right now, Kentucky only down 22 to 17. Logan and Adams, the running backs for Kentucky. Logan, 25, Adams, 33, first and 10 from the Kentucky 23-yard line. Ranstall has some time. Here's incomplete. It was intended for Logan. By the way, we have an update on that South Carolina Navy score, and hold on to your seats, folks. Navy, 31, the previously undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks, 7. We were just talking to Orange Bowl officials about South Carolina prior at halftime, prior to those scores. But can you believe that, Tim? That's incredible. You had just seen a picture of Kentucky's offense over on the sideline talking to Claiborne, and I'm sure he is, was reminding them that just three years ago they were 0-11, and 11, and this is their time. Ransdell, look at the time he has. Very complete intended for Cisco Bryant. Ransdell's had seven or eight passes dropped today. And nevertheless, he's 14 out of 28 for 143 yards and two touchdowns. And once again, as you watch Bruce Bozick, offensive tackle for Kentucky work, you got to credit the Kentucky offensive line. They're, when, when they're not getting the all-out blitz, they're giving Ransdell a lot of time. Joe Phillips goes back into the game. He has been the money catch today. Cornell Burbage and Joe Phillips have been the players. Number eight and number four at the receiving position. Third down, 10, Kentucky. Ransdell under the blitz. Oh. Down he goes at the 13. Number 93, Alonzo Johnson. Well, if you're going to know where one guy is, you got to know where number 93 is. And that was just a blown assignment. Some back probably had the responsibility for picking him up and forgot to check. Great play by Alonzo Johnson. So Calhoun will punt from his own goal line. Nikhil back at about his own 46. Remember Nikhil's second in the nation. 
in returning punts. Calhoun gets it up high. That's a little bit of a Kentucky bounce. It's going to go out of bounds in good field position for Florida at about the 46-yard line of Kentucky. Only a 32-yard punt. And Calhoun, who pulled off a beautiful punt fake that led to a touchdown, has not done a good job punting the ball today. 6.29 to go in the game. Score, Florida 22, Kentucky 17. In defense of Paul Calhoun, one thing that you don't want to do when you're playing in Florida is get those 50-yard punts because you... When you got a guy like Ricky Natiel that can run him back as well as he does, if you out punt your coverage, you could have a real problem. Well, that's a good point. Natiel does not have a lot of real good yardage returning the punch today because of that. Inside the 40 to the 39-yard line goes John L. Williams. Clock ticking down, 6-17 remaining in the game. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. It's a five-point game, Gators 22, Kentucky 17. This will be a big play here for Kentucky to have an opportunity to stop them on third down. Second down, it says three. It's closer to second down in about four and a half. But the scoreboard says three, so we'll go with it <laughs> officially anyway. gets about two or three and he is short of the first down by a yard or two and Jacobs makes his sixth tackle of the afternoon and it will be third down short yardage now for Florida. Let's have a look at 48 playing with cracked ribs in his flak jacket. And this guy is a fighter. I know his coaches back there in Coral Gables are probably watching this football game and he is struggling to get there and he's an all-out player on every play. The pros have also been impressed with the progress that he's made at linebacker since moving from defensive line. Third down three from the 39. Bell, pressure. Gets it away to that man again, John L. Williams, first down Florida. Oh, what a clutch player he has been today. Maurice Douglas with the tackles and nicely laid in there by Kerwin Bell. Soft touch, 73 yards on six catches on the day for John L. Beautiful throw. Lays it in over the top of the head of Steve Mazza, who'd worked his way upfield, trying to get Williams to stay in the backfield. Sometimes if a man is responsible to block you on a blitz, you try to fake the blitz and make him stay in. That time Williams was free, and Bell just laid it in over his head. Williams has 105 yards running, 73 catching, 178 yards of offense for the day, and here comes a couple more. John L. Williams inside the 25 to the 23. Calhoun with the tackle. Locked down to 4.58 and counting, and the Gators on the drive. They lead 22-17 by 5. You can add up pretty quickly that if they can just get down here for field goal range and get themselves an eight-point lead, it would certainly make them feel a little bit more comfortable. I'm sure they're thinking touchdown, however. There are those numbers on John L. Second down, five. From the 23, Kentucky. And there was some motion over there on the right side. Maybe 77 Crawford Kerr. Big call here. Big penalty. Illegal procedure against Florida. Jimmy Harper, our official today. Police fans who have had really a money's worth game here today most of whom were at the Kentucky Republic of China exhibition basketball game last night at Rupp Arena. SEC basketball just around the corner. Kentucky won that game. Second down, 10 to the 28. Hampton. Nowhere. Maybe three yards. He stopped shy of the 25-yard line. Needs to get to the 17 and a half for the first down. So once again, another third down conversion coming up here. Let's look at this from the field level view. I was really concerned about Kentucky's defensive line and their ability to stand up against this mammoth offensive line from Florida. But Dumbold and Hare and David Thompson, Jerry Reese, really played with a lot of courage this afternoon. Brett Whitman in the game at a receiver position now for Florida. The third down eight from the 26 of Kentucky. Well, as time. Incomplete intended for Williams. The line of scrimmage is at the 26. If they go for the field goal, that'll be a 43-yard attempt. 
Bobby Raymond comes in for a 43. Now that's at a critical distance for Raymond. Remember, Florida has two kickers. Raymond for the field goals inside 40 yards and Perkins for the field goals outside 40. This will be about 43, which is a marginal distance here for Bobby Raymond. He is five out of five on the day. Timeout, Kentucky. I guess they feel like his foot is warm, huh, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> he probably has the only warm foot if it is. Score, 22 to 17, Florida leading, 314 to go in the game. This is Turner Network Television. There's the score. Jerry Claiborne looking on as it is fourth down and eight, Florida. They are going to attempt a 43-yard field goal off the foot of Bobby Raymond. Florida leads 22 to 17. Three minutes, 14 seconds remaining in the game. Kentucky had called timeout to talk to the officials and to give Bobby Raymond's foot a chance to get cold. Number 13, you see on the sideline, now, matter of fact, is uh, out there as the holder. That's Ray Criswell, the punter. Number three is Raymond, the kicker. And again, we mentioned earlier that Florida has two kickers, Raymond, the short kicker, and Perkins, the long kicker. And even though it's on the cusp, they are elected to go with Raymond, who has five field goals on the day. 43-yard attack. Six out of six with field goals, and that's getting Florida closer and closer to their first ever SEC championship, at least a share of it. 25-17, 3-14 remaining. And Bill Kearney has joined us in the booth now. Bill is an official with the Sugar Bowl. Of course, the Southeastern Conference champion goes there. And Bill, as we take a look at Galen Hall down on the sideline, uh, what's the Sugar Bowl status uh, in terms of the University of Florida? Well, uh, Bob, if they can maintain this lead, and it's a very shaky one, as we all know, they will remain very high on our list of teams that could participate in our game, and we're certainly hoping that it will continue that way. This has been a very, very hard-earned victory if it turns out that way against an inspired and well-coached Kentucky team. If there is a tie, Bill, tell the people that the process in determining either LSU or Florida. Uh, if there is a tie and the SEC allows Florida to participate in a bowl game, it's the Sugar Bowl's choice as to which team it uh, wants to participate in its game, and it will come down to a vote uh, on that matter. Bubble on the kickoff. Could be some trouble. Logan out to the 29-yard line. We have 3.07 remaining. And here's a score. Let's take a look at the score. Bill Kearney of being a bowl official. You'll be interested in this one. LSU leading Mississippi State. That's in the first quarter. That's very Gary interesting. James. Along with, with some other scores that we've heard today. Huh? How about <laughs> the South Carolina Navy score? The last we heard it was 31 to 7 Navy leading. My gosh. That's unbelievable. And I also heard that Boston College just moved ahead of uh, Syracuse in a very close game also. Three of those seasons. Yes, it is. Kentucky on the doorstep of an upset here this afternoon. They're still in the game, down eight points. That's complete to Adams out to the 32-yard line, and down he goes. Clock ticking down to three minutes. I wanted to toss in something here. Bobby Raymond, with six field goals today, has just tied the SEC record of six in a game. He had been tied as he kicked six versus Florida State last year. Aldo Greco of Auburn in 1982 had six out of seven. So Bobby Raymond has once again tied the record of field goals made in a game, a Southeastern Conference record. Ransdell incomplete on the side as Eric Pitts, the intended receiver. Uh, there was something I read in the paper, and a couple of people have asked me about uh, Bill Kearney, and that is, for instance, if the SEC says that denies Florida the SEC championship, but does not necessarily deny Florida a bowl opportunity except for the, the championship going to the Sugar Bowl, could they be invited as the opposition in the Sugar Bowl? Uh, that would be a very remote possibility, Bob. Uh, in, in all honesty, I would say that uh, we would frown on on a situation like that because our contract... Look at this, Chris Derry. To the 45-yard line, first down, Kentucky. These Wildcats don't seem to want to quit. 2.19 to go. What if the Wildcats go 9-2? <laughs> that would be amazing. But our contract is with the Southeastern Conference. They're our friends, and we wouldn't want to do anything that would go against uh, a mandate such as that, I wouldn't think. 
Yeah, this Chris Derry's had himself an afternoon for Florida. Florida, uh, Kentucky is going to have themselves. Uh, some bowl is going to have an entertaining football team. The they University certainly are. Jerry Claven has just done a masterful job up here, in my opinion, to get a team up against the schedule he's had to play in the last three or four weeks. You get him up today like he has. Is amazing. Here's Higgs. Gets a couple of three yards out to about the 47-yard line. One more question, Bill. Well, yeah, I know you're freezing out here. And my other question to you is, with 2.07 remaining in the game, is uh, who are a couple of the other teams that you'd be considering as opposition for the SEC? Uh, at this point in time, uh, Boston College is, is one of them and uh, one of the teams out of the Big Eight. As you know, Bob, there's a possibility exists that uh, there could be a three-way tie for the championship in the Big Eight, and we would be very interested in, in one of those three teams if that's the way it came to pass. Which could be Nebraska, Oklahoma, or Oklahoma State. Or Oklahoma State, correctly. So those are our main priorities at this time. But you know the way things change, minute to minute almost, anything could happen. <laughs> well, Bill, it's uh, been a pleasure chatting with you here today. I'm going to let you go back inside and get warm and start your uh, uh, Elliot Lauderman, uh, uh, who's been with you on a couple of the trips. I've had an opportunity to get to know both of you fellas. Uh, say that part of the fun of this, it's a serious big business with the Sugar Bowl, but being able to figure out just what's going to happen. So I'm going to let you go get your crossword puzzle and work on it. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Bob. Bill Kearney with the Sugar Bowl has joined us in our booth here as you look on Galen Hall and the Florida Gators only two minutes, four seconds away from their first ever Southeastern Conference championship, at least a tie of such, as Florida leads 25 to 17. Jerry Claiborne's Wildcats have been a game bunch on the sidelines today. Kentucky's ball, second down eight from the 46. This game is not over. Eight point difference in the game. Only one timeout remaining for Kentucky. Ransdell pumping, running out of trouble, throwing on the run. It's complete. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line goes number four, Cornell Burbage. Oh, it's gone to the wire, folks. A 14-yard completion to Burbage. Ransdell, who has healed from his injuries, much more mobile than when we saw him earlier against the University of Georgia, throwing off the wrong foot throwing on the run, and Burbage has come up with some big clutch receptions today. The Wildcat fans are hanging in here. 1.56 to go in the game. Florida leading by eight. First down. Kentucky. It's completely out to the 23-yard line. Eric Pitts with a reception. Oh, my. Ransdell getting outstanding pass protection. They're in the hurry-up offense. They're lining up again as we take a look at it. You see him. He has the feet planted. Turning on the inside, catching it in traffic, is the sophomore from Lima, Ohio, Eric Pitts. Ransdell has him set. First down 10 from the 23 of Florida. Ransdell, blitz picked up well. Ransdell running. He's going to just get out of bounds to stop the clock at the 20. He was hit out of bounds, and a penalty marker's down. There is a penalty flag on the play as Ransdell was hit out of bounds at the 20. It could be a substantial penalty. Here is Jimmy Harper, the official. What a ball game at Commonwealth Stadium. It's against the Gators. I think Tim Newton with the late hit. Let's look. It's on the far sideline. Ransdell finding no one, running away, decides to go ahead and get a couple and stop the clock. Here comes 56, 285-pound Newton. Look where they spot the ball at the 10-yard line of the Gators. Personal foul. First down goal from the 10. It's an eight-point ball game. A minute 38 remaining. Kentucky with only one timeout remaining. Can the Wildcats get it into the end zone and go for two for a tie? Two ties for Florida would put LSU in the driver's seat. Ransdell on the first down and goal. Incomplete intended for Joker Phillips at the five and almost picked off. Coming up was Jarvis Williams. He was right on top of him. Stops the clock, though. Let's have a look now at Joker Phillips. He has two TD catches on the day, but watch Jarvis close fast. Here comes Williams. Ball in and out of the hands of Phillips. So it'll be second down and goal from the 10. If you want anybody at quarterback for you right now, you want Bill Ransdell. He is poised and cool, only a sophomore. His father played football at the University of Kentucky. He has grown up with Kentucky blue blood. Second down goal. Ransdell rolling to get time. Now he's got some money. Penalty markers are down. It's touchdown, Kentucky! 
The penalty marker, I believe, is going to be an offside on Florida, but let's hold it for a moment. Touchdown, Kentucky. Yellow flag is down. Now Florida players are saying it's against. It's illegal procedure, Kentucky. Touchdown nullified. Oh, the Wildcat fans are disappointed. There was movement along the defensive line, which may have caused movement on the offensive line. Let's take a look at an isolation of Pitts here with his touchdown reception that is nullified. Maybe it's Joe Phillips. Pitts was open also, as you see. Here's Joe Phillips with the reception. Pitts was open at the back of the infield. Let's see if we can see the movement now in another replay. Watch the men in blue. Saw no movement there. I believe it was on the right side of the line, which was not in our picture. There was defensive movement on the left defensive side of the line. And, of course, that defensive movement's allowed. But uh, it was, I think, Jim Reichwine who may have moved for the Kentucky Wildcats. They spot the ball at the 15 now. It will be second down, 15, from the 15. Kentucky is out of timeouts. That was their last timeout. And as you see, one minute and 23 seconds left. But it's at the 15, and Kentucky is in four-down territory here. So even though that touchdown comes back, they will have at least three opportunities here, not counting a fumble or an interception, to go for it again. This gives me a moment to remind you that this telecast is authorized under broadcast rights granted by the Southeastern Conference. It is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, rebroadcast, or retransmission of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game in whole or in part without the express written consent of the Southeastern Conference and Turner Broadcasting is prohibited. Kentucky back out after their timeout now, talking to Jerry Claiborne on the sideline. Jerry Eastman, the offensive coordinator, about what to call down here. It's a, an eight-point game. Florida 25, Kentucky 17, 123 to go. This is second down goal from the 15. Ransdell. Time. It's picked off. Adrian White picks it out of the air, and the Gators have dodged a bullet and have held on. With a minute 16 to go, all Florida has to do now is run out the clock. But these Wildcats have driven all the way down and even got the touchdown, which was nullified by a penalty. But what a game effort they have made today against the Florida Gators. Galen Hall will be happy to get out of Lexington. A minute and 16 seconds away from clinching at least a tie for the SEC championship, and you can see it all there. Gary Claiborne congratulating his players on an outstanding effort against one of the most explosive football teams in America today. No timeouts for Kentucky. By the way, the University of Florida, I just want to know for mention for you folks watching in Florida, will host a reception and celebration for the SEC champions at 7 o'clock tonight at Florida Field. Florida holds on a couple more minutes here. Let's take a look at Adrian White, who comes in here to pick it off. Now, Ransdell, under some pressure, having to move out of the pocket with this pressure he gets from Florida, waiting and looking, can't see any coverage, pops it a wrong way here, trying to find his tight end, Oliver White, and Adrian White comes and picks it off right there about the eight-yard line. Uh, Coach Galen Hall and the Florida Gators will be part of that celebration down in Gainesville, in case you're watching down in that area tonight football team asks that you please welcome them at Florida Field and not at the airport tonight. They do not want to have all the people at the airport if that's possible down there. So the university has a bonfire and celebrations going on at the Gator Band Shell in Gainesville to celebrate the first ever Southeastern Conference Championship for the University of Florida Gators. You see it all on the face of Galen Hall. ticking down and the Florida Gators are six seconds away from their first ever Southeastern Conference Championship. Tim Foley has headed to the locker room. We will have interviews with the Florida Gators right after this. They know not what fate awaits them when the SEC Executive Committee meets on Tuesday. They may be stripped of their title, but for these players and this team and these fans today, they have clinched at least a share of the Southeastern Conference Championship. It's the first time ever that the Gators have posted an undefeated mark in Southeastern Conference play. Today they win 25-17, to 17, but the game Kentucky Wildcats were pounding on them when the clock ran out. This is Turner Network Television.
Navy and South Carolina tied 7 all at this point. Navy with a ball. Bob Meesh goes to Ken Hine for a touchdown. And Navy with a big upset of the making over South Carolina. It is 38-15 in the fourth. Welcome to the Redman Action Center in Atlanta. Plenty of other upsets to talk about. We'll have those in a few moments. Now let's go back to Commonwealth Stadium. Many of these Kentucky fans are staying here, but so are the Florida Gator fans. They're in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. As you can see, they are in the, the orange and the blue still staying because this was one of the best games we've had all year in our SEC Game of the Week. Florida holding on for a 25-17 win, and they win their first ever Southeastern Conference Championship, possibly a tie if LSU goes on to defeat Mississippi State today. So that's it from... Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. Next week, we'll be in Jackson, Mississippi for the traditional rivalry between the Rebels of Ole Miss and the Bulldogs of Mississippi State at noon on our SEC Game of the Week. Tim Foley is in the locker room with the Florida Gators. He will be talking to those fellows who are jubilant in their celebration right now on our football action report coming up on most of these stations. So we invite you to stay tuned with that with interviews with the Florida Gators, Galen Hall, about their first ever SEC championship. Now, we will mention once again Again, not to throw the cold water, but the SEC Executive Committee does meet on Tuesday. The word is from virtually everybody you talk to that the Southeastern Conference Executive Committee will strip Florida of their title due to the NCAA investigation and the violations, the 59 violations that the, SC, the NCAA found against Florida. But for now, those young men who are celebrating know that they hung together and that they played together all year long. For the first time ever, Florida went undefeated in the Southeastern Conference. For the first time ever, the Florida Gators have won a Southeastern Conference championship. They also tie a school record for eight straight wins, and the unbeaten streak of nine straight is a new school record for a season. And this is the first time since 1975 that Florida has posted five Southeastern Conference wins. And as you see in the locker room now, as the players bow their heads, they are thankful for the victory. And finally, after all of these years, Florida has won the SEC championship until at least Tuesday when the SEC executive committee meets. Now, LSU is playing now, and you see the, you see the victims. Tennessee, Mississippi State, Auburn, Kentucky, and Georgia. LSU with a question mark. Our opener for SEC telecast on TNT this year was that big Florida LSU game that was the 21-21 tie. But we just have to say, as you look at the replay of the celebration as the final seconds ticked away here today, that the most exciting game had to be this one here in Commonwealth. Kentucky actually scored what could have been a touchdown with a two-point conversion to tie this game but they were ruled to have committed illegal procedure the touchdown called back and on the very next play Bill Ransdell threw an interception as he was trying to hit his tight end Oliver White Adrian White came out of the Florida secondary to pick off the pass and stop the Kentucky drive and Florida holds on for their victory of 25 to 17 now the latest score we heard on LSU Mississippi State as you look at Galen Hall that's scenes right now from the Florida locker room. LSU is leading Mississippi State in Mississippi by a score of 7-0, and we'll update that on our football action report, which will come up next along with interviews on that action report live from the Florida locker room. For Tim Foley, our spotter Kim Anderson, our statistician David Carroll, this is Bob Neal. So long from Commonwealth Stadium. Big story, the Florida Gators. Tim Foley standing live at the locker room in Commonwealth Stadium. Go ahead, Tim. The Redman Football Action Report is brought to you by Redman Chewing Tobacco. The Redman Reaction is Satisfaction. The Florida Gators are celebrating their first Southeastern Conference title in history. Let's go to Tim Foley. Go ahead, Tim. We're here in the uh, Florida locker room. At least, they've at least since the tie for the SEC championship. And, uh, and I just witnessed something kind of historic, I guess, in terms of uh, Florida coaching traditions anyway. I'm, I'm here with President Marshall Kreiser, and he just made an announcement to his players. You want to tell the folks at home what you told them? 
Well, first of all, I congratulated this Gator team who represented every Gator that ever played for the University of Florida today. We're finally conference champions, maybe co-champions, but they won it on the field and they won it under terrible adversity. And they're a great, great bunch of Gators and we're proud of them. So I thought we'd give them a little news today and talk about the future. And we announced that Galen Hall is the permanent head football coach at the University of Florida. Thank you, President. Now we're, we're, so we're here with the new president. I mean, excuse me, not, well, you got, I guess that qualifies too. You're the new president and the new head coach at the University of Florida, Galen Hall. I know when I talked to you in the beginning of the year, you were kind of concerned about what was going to happen with this situation here. Your fortunes have certainly turned up, though. Uh, Tim, we have a very, very fine football team. They've, they've played great all year against great adversity. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be put in, in the, this position. We said at the beginning of the year we'd play one at a time, and, and fortunately it came down to this, this game, and we're, we're conference champions, and it's a great honor for these players, you know, to represent the University of Florida. Yeah, yeah. Well, they never said it was going to be easy. Here I was down here in the locker room, and you were having all the fun out there, right? That's right. You, you missed a heck of a football game about the last two minutes. I know Joe Kynes was a little bit nervous about that. Tell me what you were thinking during that time. Well, uh, the obvious thing was I, I didn't think they would score, uh, but if they did, they go for two. We hold them there. Even if they get to two, we got our two-minute offense. We got to go with a long field goal and still win the football game. Well, you've been in these situations many times before. You've been with some fine football teams, and I'm, I'm sure that this Florida team is going to climb in the rankings, wouldn't you feel? This is a great football team. They've shown uh, all year that that they are that uh, we were highly ranked before this game this game does nothing to change my mind that this this is a team that needs a very high ranking well, I was I was I thought they'd be ranked higher than they were last week and that we're gonna talk to a couple of your players now the Galen good congratulations uh, Tim New head football coach Tim Foley this is Bob Neal in the booth Yeah, Bob. Yes, this is Bob in the booth. I was hoping you could ask uh, President Kreiser uh, before he got away there. Do you still have a chance to get uh, President Marshall Kreiser? Yeah, he's still here. Uh, I wonder if we could just get him to make one comment about uh, uh, his views. He had said earlier that there might be some court action on the part of Florida uh, if, in fact, they are ruled ineligible. And I wonder if he could just comment on that right now. That is the potential court action from Florida uh, on the SEC ruling, depending on what happens on Tuesday. Bob Neal would like you to comment president on the potential court action by the University of Florida in case you are ruled ineligible. Well, we're not going to talk about court action this time. There's a hearing by the SEC next uh, Tuesday. Uh, we'll be at the hearing. We'll make a presentation to the SEC executive committee, and, and they'll make their decision at that time. Well, thank you very much. You've handled this whole situation with class. It's nice to meet you. The throw in May Owen. How about it, Kerwin? Uh, I'm just speechless. It's just a great victory. Uh, it's my first year, and uh, now we've won it. And uh, all the seniors, they, they just elated about it, and I'm just glad I could do something for them. Well, it was a long a long way from fifth string in the springtime, right? right? What's been the most difficult thing for you to deal with through this whole process? Um, just basically being comfortable back there in the game and, and keeping my poise. And um, I think that's one of my strong points is my poise, though, and, and, and just reading defenses. And um, I've come along now, though, and picking out my receivers, and, and I think I'm, you know, progressing pretty well. Well, there's no question about it that you've done an amazing job, and the thing that has impressed me most is your ability to, com to maintain your composure out there and to, and to take the time and pick out the right man to throw it to. Congratulations to Kerwin Bell. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to be we're going to be going briefly now for this, to our studios in Atlanta. Paul Horning and Craig Sager will be back with you here shortly. Well, thank you, Tim. In a wild locker room, we mentioned Marshall Kreiser. You have to be impressed with the new president. I really do. I think I could echo the words of Don Canham. Don Canham, the athletic director of Michigan, said that no. Since the last 25 years, nothing has been handled as beautifully as Marshall Chrysler has handled this situation at the University of Florida. And I really believe that the reason they have a chance to participate in the bowl game is the class and the way this man has handled that Florida situation. Uh, I don't think it was a big surprise that Galen Hall was going to be named the head coach of Florida. My heavens, he's the only undefeated coach in the country ever. <laughs> he's never lost to anybody. Great to have it right here also. Now Florida has to find out if it has the conference title by itself or if it has to share it with LSU. Currently, LSU battling Mississippi State 7-7 seven to seven that game in the second quarter. LSU with the ball. Gary James gets the call. Goes outside, breaks one tackle, spins, twists, finds his way on his balance, hops over another man, 
great running back between Dalton Hilliard and Gary James. The touchdown right there made it 7-all. And there you have it, LSU Mississippi State. Elsewhere in the conference, Georgia Auburn. Of course, this has no bearing on the conference title, but a big rivalry nonetheless. That begins at 7.30 Eastern time. Tennessee has a field goal in front of Old Miss. Alabama 20, Cincinnati 7. That is at the half, and Virginia Tech leading Vanderbilt in the second. The Craig Oklahoma State hasn't been to a major bowl. Yeah. Well, we got we got some happy fo folks back here, Craig. There's no question about it, and it's hard to pick out any heroes in a game like that. As all of Florida's victories, it really was a team effort. Joe Kynes' defense just swarming around the ball offensively. We got one of the stars with us right here, a couple of them, really. John L. Williams, junior fullback, rushed for 109 yards. He had 171 yards in total offense. It's quite a day for you, John L. Well, anytime you can have a day like that, it's successful and you feel good about it. And, and Gary Roll is standing here. Gary Roll had a chance last year to go to med school. He was a transfer from West Point. Decided to play another year here with Florida, and I guess that was a good decision, right, Gary? The young man from uh, Carroll City High School down in Miami. Yeah, I'm from, from where you are. Uh, yeah, I, I had a chance to go to med school, but this makes it all worth it. And Gary was one of the 11 players named as top student athletes in the country. And I guess I'll see you in New York at the Hall of Fame banquet, right? Yes, sir. Sure will. <laughs> and we got the man with the golden foot here. I guess now that last kick was 43 yards. I thought the cutoff point was 40. That Bobby Raymond kicked six field goals today, tied the SEC record for field goals. That's right. I just want to say uh, my older brother's been in the hospital lately. And I want to say that I, I hit all those field goals for him. I hope he got a chance to watch the game and hope he's doing okay. I love him a lot. And uh, thanks. Well, that's great. A lot of excitement here and a lot of people feeling great about what they've accomplished this year. All these Florida players have been through a lot of adversity. And that's it here from Commonwealth Stadium. Back to Craig and Paul. Well, thank you, Tim. That was nice. Bobby Raymond, six field goals for Absolutely. his brother. I bet that would get him up on his feet, too. Great day with the foot, I'll tell you. Six for six. Not big. What about the Gators? They have a sweet tooth? Oh, yeah. They're thinking about the Sugar Bowl. <laughs> It took 52 years of trying, but Florida is finally the SEC football champs, at least until Tuesday. The Gators down Kentucky 25-17 to win the title, but on Tuesday, the SEC Executive Committee could strip Florida of its first conference crown because of NCAA rules violations. But for now, let's get to the good stuff. Florida took a 12-3 halftime lead on four Bobby Raymond field goals. This one good from 30 yards out. Third period, Gators leading 12-10. Kentucky's Bill Ransdale throws from his own end zone and is picked off by Jarvis Williams at the Wildcat 15. And three plays later on third and fourth, Kerwin Bell rolls right and finds Frankie Neal in the end zone for a touchdown. Nine yards on the play, Florida leads 19-10. But Kentucky refuses to die. And following a Raymond field goal, Ransdale finds Joe Phillips with an eight-yard touchdown pass. Wildcats trail 22-16. Raymond booted six field goals in the game, and this 43-yarder gives Florida a 25-17 lead late in the fourth period. But here comes Kentucky. Storming back at the Florida 10-yard line, Ransdale rolls left, looking for Phillips in the end zone. Touchdown! But hold the phone. No six points. Wildcats are flagged for illegal procedure. And Kentucky tries again from the Florida 15. But Ransdale is picked off by Adrian White with 116 left. Florida escapes with a 25-17 victory. And uh, we did we did our part. We won it on the field, and that's what we we look at. Uh, we we to us we were SEC champions, and we think we deserve to go somewhere. For this team going to the locker room is a pleasure this time. In Lexington, Kentucky, they have at least clinched half of the Southeastern Conference title, something they have not done in 51 years. The Florida Gators, Happy Gators, SEC champion Gators. Oh, uh, it's great. Uh, it's, I don't believe it. It's like a dream to me. It's like I'm, I'm sitting here waiting to wake up, you know. Uh, it's, we did, just went out and did something that no other team have ever done in Florida history. It's a great feeling. I can't wait to get back home and celebrate. As we had to suspect, along with the SEC championship, another announcement of importance. Yeah, and I first congratulated the football team, told them we had some tough times ahead of us, both in the short range and the long range, and when you have tough times and tough problems, you better have good leaders. So we announced that Galen Hall is going to be the head football coach at the University of Florida. You've, it, it's official now. It sure is. <laughs> and that feels good along with the champions? That's right. It's, uh, it, it was a great opportunity for me, and uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, the, the next years at Florida. Another big celebration awaited the championship team, a new head coach. Charlie Tuggle reports from Gainesville. 300 Gator fans began the celebration in a crowded theater bar in Gainesville, watching the game on a giant screen. 
The final interception to preserve the win had the expected effect. Things were wild on campus down Frat Row and at a place familiar to all old Gators, University in 13th. These Gator fans really got excited when they found out that LSU had been upset, giving Florida the SEC title outright. The celebration reached its peak when the 1984 SEC champions walked onto Florida Field. Needless to say, I want to take a selfish moment and tell you people, this is one of the happiest days of my life. A day to be remembered by Gators of all ages. In Gainesville, I'm Charlie Toggle, Newswatch 8 Sports. Florida got some help from Mississippi State. Artie Cosby boots this 27-yard field goal to beat LSU 16-14, handing the Gators the SEC title. Now, only the SEC executive committee can burst Florida's bu uh, bubble and deny the Gators the SEC title and a trip to the Sugar Bowl. That decision should come on Tuesday.